Alrighty, righty, righty. So lots of administrative stuff today. Do you need to explain something? No, I'm great at being the people self. <laughs> so uh, it's been, she's talked about their, oh, oh, okay, gee, we got, we got behind. Yeah, well, get us behind. So mm -hmm. we're going to go ahead and get the stuff squared away. But meanwhile, yeah, I told her she can sit to the first class because most of it's on screen anyway. So what we're going to see. Oh, well, I want you to have that come and sit here by Maya because um, we're using the books today to experiment and see if you really want one. Okay. Um, I mean, I just wanted you to sit where you could share or you could sit up here if you want. Where okay. there's a bundle of papers. Thank you. Yeah. I, I think we're good. Thank you, Ms. Don't, don't go to Florida. <laughs> Um, alrighty, so we have a bunch of administrative stuff that goes through, <laughs> and I'm so excited to see all of y'all, and most of you have met with, and we've done some work, and uh, so anyway, you know, I'm Stacy, and my office now is right, it's the first one going down the hall, I moved, yes, and um, so I'm always here for you. Okay, uh, the very first thing uh, we need to do is I need to read this page, which should be the top one. Um, this is a requirement, a direct requirement. Um, we contract with Outfront Education to handle your paperwork for getting your post license credit, and so there's some official direct rules um, and. Oh, I need the whole bunch. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Outburn Education is approved by the Georgia Real Estate Commission to offer sales pre-license, broker pre-license, post-license, and continuing education classes courses. The school code is six three three three, and the renewal date is December thirty first, twenty twenty. And the school policies are located on our website at outfronteducation.com. This program meets the requirement of the Georgia Real Estate Commission for the 25-hour Georgia Real Estate Sales Post License course um, or 33 hours of continuing education credit. That's confusing. Don't worry about it. In order to receive credit for this course, you must be on time and present for the entire 36 hours of instruction. That's uh, 12 times 3 because we meet 12 times. Um, once the instructor begins, you will not be allowed in the classroom. Your complete completion information will be electronically transmitted to the Georgia Real Estate Commission via their online course completion portal at the end of the course upon successful completion. Entrance qualifications and standards of completion will not be based on a student's race, color, sex, religion, national origin, familial status, or handicap. Um, we're all in this office, so there's no recruiting to another office, but we're all family. Thank you and enjoy your class. Now, that, okay, done. Um, the, there are 12 sessions. You can't, um, and there's an, a test at the end, 15 multiple choice. Everyone will pass. Um, it's not a cakewalk, but, um, it's definitely doable. You can miss two classes um, and still finish on time. Uh, we will record every session. It will go on our YouTube channel um, so you can watch it later. It, it won't count for CE credit, but if you just want to you know, review the content. If you, for whatever reason, family situation, illness, um, have to miss, up to three or four, you can like have hold your class record and make it up in the next at night class those specific classes and um, go. But if you, once you get to five misses, you have to start over. Their rules, not mine. So um, it, 
Is everybody doing this for post license credit? Yes. No. No. Yes. Marvelous. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it makes no difference, but um, in terms of how we run the course. So the next thing I want to go over is this um, horizontal. What I did is I took the Ignite calendar that everybody got and gave you more information and I wove in what we call, consider the extra classes that we really, 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 really want you to go to for your own good. For instance, after number seven, when the buyer, um, the folks from Certainty Mortgage um, who will be giving you lunch that day um, <clears throat> will be here for an mm, hour and 15, hour and a half to talk about the basics of mortgages, you know, the difference between conventional FHA, that sort of thing, and um, what your role as an agent, the role you play to get to the closing table in terms of collaborating with the lender. Um, so please, and I've given you time, please, please, please put that on your calendar. Um, and let's see, Scott Hardy is going to come back and do the Playster website so everybody can launch their website if they'd like to. Um, so anyway, the ones in gray are non-Ignite classes, but really, I mean, they're for you. But so um, the important thing is that you put it on your calendars, okay? Um, it's very frustrating when somebody says, oh, I didn't know. Mm. Okay. There's all kind of calendars out there. So um, please don't tell me you didn't know something. Anyway, uh, here we go. So we are, uh, we'll be having lunch uh, wherever and when I know who the, uh, the vendors are, we'll let you know. But are there any questions about this? Wonderful. Um, so, as I was saying, we're, not everybody wants a book. So, um, I, I think I have 10 books now or something, and um, we're going to go through it, and then I want you to let me know at the end, do you want a book? They're $40, but, so you can save $40 if you don't want the book. They're heavy, they're a pain to bring in, but, you know, it's whatever's your style. In addition to the book, um, uh, we print and bind the, the toolkit, which prepare to show homes checklist. You've got some checklists, handouts, um, checklists for reviewing an offer. So the, I like the toolkit. And we will, if, if, even if you don't buy the book, we'll give you, a, I'll have toolkits for you at next, um, next class. So, before we, okay, nope, we'll do one more. My sheet of many colors. Okay, uh, some of you I've already met with and have already started checking off what they've done. So, right, Maya? Have you checked some things off? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, we grouped by category, kind of like um, item, and this is sort of your roadmap for about the first six months that you're with us. Of and and especially in the training sessions, um, front and back, a whole <coughs> lot of those. If you just come to Ignite and, and stay for the extra classes, you, you'll fulfill these. And again, it's not a, these aren't requirements uh, for like being a part of this office. This is what we recommend so that you get fully equipped, educated, grounded, um, to go out and achieve your goals. So, um, any questions on this? Um, 
and it, it, it we probably should meet one on one if we haven't yet on those. Okay, before we actually <coughs> get into the the lesson for today, I, I want us to introduce ourselves, and we have three que three questions that I want you to answer. So we're not going to give long, you know, long presentations. And I got some help from Pete to come up with some um, different questions. So, um, and I will remind you if you forget. First one is, what's the coolest thing you've ever done in Atlanta, in the ATL? Okay. Um, so you can tie it in with the fact that you were born and raised here, or you just got here last week, or, but something, coolest thing you've done in Atlanta. Okay, number two is, What's the most difficult thing you've ever accomplished? Business, personal, whatever. And the last is what's something about you that people wouldn't expect? <coughs> people would be surprised to find out. What was number three again? Three is what's something about you that people wouldn't expect? Um, so Tim, I'm thinking that people would think that there was a relationship to basketball if they met you. So that's not going to count. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now basketball. Um, so is anybody ready to get... You know what? Because um, I know the <coughs> might take a minute or two to think about. Um, I'm just going to introduce y'all to each other, um, Janae Buchan. Mm -hmm. Janae Buchan. Turn around. Say. Hi, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to be a, a, answer the question. Are, no. are you ready? Yeah, sure. Oh, oh go um, girl. So hmm. the coolest thing that I've done in Atlanta is that I was able to buy four rental properties right behind each other. Um, the most difficult thing was maintaining all four of those <laughs> properties. Um, and then something interesting about me, or people wouldn't know about me, is that I love to travel and that I've been to Australia and New Zealand. Cool, cool. So Janae has, um, I mean, she's a brand new realtor, but she has been a, a real estate investor herself and knows a little something about um, rental, you know, buying, flipping rentals. So. You, she's a resource in that <laughs> regard. Okay, Pete English, uh, are you ready? I uh, guess so. There you go. Uh, my name is Pete English. And don't just talk to me. Talk to your <coughs> class. Hello, class. Hi, class. I'm happy. <laughs> His real name is Pierce. I don't know how we got to you. <laughs> <laughs> I was born at a very early age, so I didn't have a whole lot of choice in names. <laughs> um, the coolest thing I've done I probably was um, quite a few years ago, they had this thing called the Rambling River Raft Race. I don't know if any of you lived yeah, in that long enough to know that. But it was two or three hundred thousand people floating the Chattahoochee River on the same day at the same time. Wow. It was interesting. It was wall to wall. Mm -hmm. uh, the most difficult thing I've ever done was this is this is the third business that I started. The first business that I started lasted about 30 years, and so uh, running a business, hiring, firing, and making that work was pretty difficult to do. But uh, it was interesting. And what's the third thing? Oh, what you might not know about me is uh, I have a patent. Wow, can you what what is? Oh, I, well, I can't talk about. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> that was so great. We'll what category would it be? Um, we'll catch them on Shark Tank, I think. Electronic target systems for gun ranges and law enforcement. Ah. So shooting real guns or bullets. Wow. Right. Did not know that. <laughs> don't don't make him mad, I guess. Right. right. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm not going to go in order. Ira. Uh, what was Tell the first us. question? Coolest thing? Coolest thing you've ever done in Atlanta. Uh, been and you're on. Ira Fallick. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ira Fallick. I'm, I'm, I'm a two-headed monster. I, this is right. Contracting. I do a lot of disaster restoration work. Uh, I've been in business for over 20 years. 
um, um, reactivated. Okay, does everybody know what disaster restoration it's, it's works? It's a glorious term for uh, insurance. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he goes down and gives the estimate, so he he yeah. is our um, inspection expert. Um, so yeah, I do that, and I'm reactivating my license from the time frame of 09. Um, so the coolest thing that I think I ever did in Atlanta was that for about three years I was in the limousine industry. So we had a lot of interesting contracts and stuff with musicians and mm -hmm. high-end um, hotels and stuff. So there was a lot of infamous people that I kind of rubbed elbows with for a while. Um, and then I guess they kicked me out of the circle. Sat <laughs> <laughs> um, in your back seat. <laughs> I think the toughest thing I ever did um, recently within the last two years is that there was a heavy negotiation with the Department of Transportation. Um, on some eminent domain issues and got them to change their construction plans uh, for a condo property and stuff that I had right there in the Sandy Springs area. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty intensive. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and one of the things that's interesting and stuff is I was a high-level basketball player for many years. <laughs> you may not expect that. <laughs> I was pretty dirty good and played in NBA programs for about eight years. Cool. Go Ira! She'll write a book. Who does bunk it? Right. All right. All right. We're gonna be skirmishing. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, you I'll hit the court up. Anna Corley, are you sure. comfortable going? Oh, yeah. Um. So I'm Anna Corley. Most people know me on the tenth court of AC, so that's fine. Um, ah. So yeah. AC. Yeah. Um. I just prefer nothing that's just Anna. That's the one that I don't like. I like the double. Um. So, interesting thing in Atlanta. So I've been here all my life, and I've actually gotten to page twice for the in session co Congress here in Atlanta. So I've got to the go state to legislature. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. um, cool. Which is cool to see kind of the in and outs of, mm -hmm. particularly when you're young. But um, the other thing is I've bought and sold two properties here in Atlanta, so that's kind of how we got into all of this. Um, and you I being am, yourself and your husband. Yes. <coughs> um, and then my most difficult thing recently would be that I transferred from nanny into real estate. So I'm getting off of my last child that I nannied I was with for three years. So it's been kind of a emotional <laughs> where I feel like I've lost one of my babies. So um, that's kind of been a difficult, but I'm very excited to kind of have some more flexibility and work on my own family. So. And, and you're really from Athens, right? I'm from Athens. Um, so I guess and and tell them about which sports teams you pull for. Oh, so I'm a bulldog through and through until it's basketball season, and then I'm a Tar Heel. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we have another one. Interesting fact too. is I do travel, and I have now officially stepped foot in 25 countries. Good. Wow. Wow. Awesome. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You're not old enough for that, but that's great. Mm -hmm. That's less travel than just very cool, very cool. Okay, Erin? Sure. Erin Smith. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I'm struggling with answers for me, but I'm going to go. If you want to pass. No, no. I will I would just ponder over it all day. So, <laughs> coolest thing I've done in Atlanta, uh, I just actually moved to Sandy Springs area, so Atlanta. Um, I guess we'll be moving there. I have not done lots in Atlanta, so I'm very excited to be in the area and um, getting used to the traffic. I came from Newton, so Nobody not far, does. but <laughs> right. So most difficult thing that I have accomplished would probably be, um, let's see, in 2015, I went back to school as a single mom, and I worked full time for Delta Airlines in engineering, and I went back to school and got my um, bachelor's degree in aeronautical science. And that was, yeah, really difficult. I'm um, sure. still. I graduated in 2017, and my body and mind are still recovering. <laughs> 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 I lost years of my life just, you know, <laughs> killing it for that. But it was um, a good experience. So, most interesting thing about me that you wouldn't know or expect, um. Maybe that I was an engineer a few months ago. <laughs> um, I also have a rental house in Grant Park and a rental house in Newton. My boyfriend and I do. So. Got a thing going here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. And how old's your son? Five. Here we go. 
Now, you no, you don't have children. Have <laughs> right. Oh, I forgot to say, you've got to tell about your pets. So, okay. <laughs> there are kids. Yeah, there. I have a Morky and a Pitbull. A monkey. Morky. <laughs> <laughs> Um, children and pets, just to catch up. Uh, my wife has a cat. I have no affiliation with the animal. <laughs> <laughs> Understand. Uh, uh, and I have two grown daughters. Okay. In a curly. No. No cats, no pets. She travels. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Ira. Yeah, so I recently lost last year and stuff my yellow lab to age and failing health, but I do have a, a Mancoon cat who's cool. <laughs> and I've got four boys. Named? Uh, he's Tig. Tig. Short for Tigger. And um, but he's cool. And then I've got four boys. The youngest is 12, going to be 13. Oh. And he plays? Uh, he plays high-level baseball and basketball. Cool. Yeah, he's a cool kid. Mm -hmm. um, has anybody else gone just to catch, catch up? Okay. Uh, Mia, talk to me. Oh wait, Aaron. Oh, well, five. So I have uh, my five-year-old son, but I also have um, two cats, um, Flowers and Gates, like Gatorade. Our animals are named crazy names. The nice one, of course. <laughs> uh, my son named him because his favorite drink was Gatorade, and he wanted to name him Gates. So um, it was better than the first name he picked, which was Carbs. <laughs> 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 I don't know where that came from. Um, and then Flowers is the other one, which is simple. Um, and then Shop, S H O P, is my dog. He's huge. He's um, the vet, and we think he's a greyhound um, shepherd mix. But he's white, uh, with blonde, blonde white. Um, and he is probably, his head probably comes up here. He's super thin. He only weighs like 65 pounds, but he's huge. And he like stands up, he's taller than me. Um, but he. So he showed up at my dad's house in his shop where he, my dad has hot rods and stuff. He works in cars. And, uh, so my dad started calling him the shop dog. Well, he kept coming back, and then he didn't leave. And my dad couldn't keep him, so we kept him. We tried to change his name, and it didn't, it didn't work. So <laughs> he's shop. <laughs> wow. Wow. We're going to have a bring your pet to Ignite Day. I'm <laughs> feeling it. I'm feeling I, it. I did just lose my, um, my golden retriever. Um, I got him when I was 14 years old, mm -hmm. and he had cancer that, that got worse, and um, he just passed away November 30th, so he was 15. That's a good life for him. Oh yeah, he lived a, a great life, and he was happy every day until the last one, and that's when I told him that was, you know, every day he's happy, we're fine, but the first day is not. Yeah. Okay. Go home. Good to you. Goodness. I can finally say it without like, <laughs> <laughs> but he was my best friend. He lived with me. I understand. Uh, Mia. Right now, Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my coolest experience this year, I have two. One when I was in college. That's excuse me, I'm getting over something. The one when I was in college, we went to, um, it was for extra credits for a class. We went to an uh, African, like a uh, witch doctor. <laughs> wow. In Atlanta? Yeah. That was for credit. Extra credit. That was it. <laughs> and the cool things thing. that I saw him do was pretty um, Unmentionable. Was, was it at the municipal market? No, it was at his house. Like, I want to say the camera. It was at his home. It was at his home. You should go to the municipal market sometimes. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. But Let's they had keep going. Hill. Um, and recently, I walked up Stone Mountain. Yeah. And I didn't know that you can. That was a yeah. I love to, to do up. that. Until I did, I was like, okay, I made it. Yeah. 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 And then the hardest thing is being a stay-at-home mom of two children for a total of five years, like mm -hmm. back to back. That was a lot. And unexpected. I owned a mortgage company in Los Angeles before. Wow. Oh, before? Peak, yes, at the peak of the market for a whole three years before it crashed. Oh. So those are good times. Wow. I hope you saved the phone. 
<laughs> <laughs> okay, and Mia, yeah. do you always introduce yourself as Bossier Crawford? It's such a long name. I just say Mia Bossier. Bo Bossier. Until I have to like sign my name or something. Okay. Yeah. So, she's Mia Bossier. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pets, children? So I have two okay. children, um, three and six, three-year-old little boys that is off the chain, <laughs> and a six-year-old little girl that's sweet as pie. And I have a 12 year old pit bull Aww. that's also sweet as pie. Yeah. <laughs> Three year old. <laughs> oh my goodness. How about Katie? Um, or do you professionally go with Kathleen? You're Katie to me. No, but, hmm. I'm Katie. Okay. I was Kathleen when I was young and started working and wanted to sound older, but now that I'm older, <laughs> I want to sound older. But um, the coolest thing was we attended the Olympics when they were here in '96. You're um, feeling my thunder. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say the hardest thing I ever did um, is a toss up between coming back to work after being at the home for five years. Because mm -hmm. that's tough. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and um, or I had to take care of my grandmother before she died, and that was that was really tough. Uh, I don't remember what. This is. Oh, unexpected. I love to rent. I help my husband renovate, and I love working with power tools. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Sweet. <laughs> Tool time? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we love, I love it. My husband is scared, but I have my own drill. I yeah. understand. Uh, yeah, I have my own drill. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay, children pet. Um, I've got two kids, a daughter who's four and a half and a son who's six, and then I have two cats, a twelve year old named Bucket and a little kitten named Nori. Oh Bucket. Yes. My and name is Bucket. Explain your relationship to the Providence Group. I am their assistant. Okay, now so we have a team in the office named the Providence Group. They're right down the hall. And Katie has been their assistant, and now she's getting licensed because she can do more things mm -hmm. and maybe make more money. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Tim. Tim Andrews. Pleasure meeting everyone. Um, I'd say my most See, the coolest thing I've done in Atlanta is I was a, a locomotive engineer for the Southern Railway, it's a Class A railroad. I did that for about 10 years. And the uh, most difficult thing was I became an investigator. I investigate train accidents, work derailments, collisions. Oh. Oh. Did that for another that 12 years. Awesome. Um, yeah. And what is something you wouldn't know about me? I'm an NCAA basketball officer. <laughs> <laughs> been doing that for years. Now, do you, are you just one um, conference or? Um, Sun Belt Southern, uh, Peach Belt, SIEC, uh, some local Division II conferences, JUCO conferences. I don't go as much because I'm a seven-year-old now. So yeah, you travel to get there, I know. Yeah, okay. and I have uh, three children. I have a 31-year-old, a 23-year-old, and a seven-year-old son. <laughs> and well, that's okay. why I'm here today is because my wife was a tag year at <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's been traveling for years and now she said it's your turn. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um pets? No pets. They're trying to talk me into getting a dog, but it's Do it. I don't want to take care Do of it. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. Um Tia Field. Hello, my name is Tia Field and my what was it? What was the first one? Cool things done in Atlanta. The coolest in the skit. And the scariest thing or something? Well, no, and then the hardest, most difficult thing you've ever done. My coolest and the hardest thing in Atlanta probably pretty much goes together. Okay. Because I, I'm from Indiana, Fort Wayne, Indiana, and I left there in 2007, quit my job, moved two kids, single parents, and we've been here ever since. So that kind of like went together because I stepped out and I'm still here. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but so, difficult. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So those to me go together hand in hand. Mm -hmm. My kids, I have a 22 year old son and I have a 14 year old daughter. And the coolest thing about me is I recently started a home based business, being a, a financial educator, st teaching strategies on how to become debt free, invest, and clean your credit. So anybody want more information? Oh, yeah, okay. that's yeah. great. So <laughs> please do come to the um, certainty uh, <coughs> session, certainty. Homeland because that's 
definitely an area they cover. And we have several agents in the office. I'm thinking Nicole Ambrose, um, I think Star Eberhard, where they really focus. They on, they post on social media about you know come come we'll help you clean up your credit. I mean they just made themselves aware of programs and what resources. So okay, Bob Katrina. Okay. Uh, my name is Bob Trina. Um, I think the probably the coolest thing that, that I've been able to do is um, uh, I actually worked for Coca-Cola for many years and I was able to actually lead the Super Bowl execution here in Atlanta. So putting together the marketing program, putting together the execution behind it, as well as uh, attending all the events. So uh, all the pre-Super Bowl parties, they had like the NFL, uh, like the NFL cook-off, and I mean, just awesome stuff. So you know, the, it was kind of almost like the VIP, you know, treatment as, as kind of a thank you for working uh, on the uh, the program and attending the game. So that was a great. It was a great game too. It was, came down to last, uh, you know, pretty much play. So, um, and I think the most difficult thing is um, actually, as, as I mentioned, working for Coke I was. I just retired from Coca-Cola after 34 years with the company. So, corporate America. I've uh, been in six different cities, from San Francisco to Lansing, Michigan, to Philadelphia, and and moving to Atlanta probably about 20 years ago, and being here in Atlanta. So, um, that was a, kind of a good move. And then um, things that uh, you know uh, that you would know about me um, uh, actually. From a movie perspective, in, in college, uh, I was kind of in the movie Risky Business as an extra. Uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, I think I got most part was kind of left on the cutting room floor. But fast forward, you know, uh, I don't know, 35 years, uh, my son, who I helped him purchase a house, but I wasn't a real estate agent at that time, but um, he bought a house in Roswell, and there's a huge movie industry here in, in Atlanta and uh, they were putting flyers in boxes and so I helped him negotiate a deal with the movie company. They used his house uh, in the movie First, uh, uh, First Man, which was just out with Ryan Gosling mm -hmm. in theaters here wow. in uh, what, October. Mm -hmm. And so if you ever have an opportunity to, you know, if a movie, movie company comes to you and like they're a young couple, you know, they you know, rent your house, they do all kinds of remodel uh, things, it was a, a pretty uh, pretty nice little bump for for them. So cool. Uh, it was very cool. Very cool. Children pets. Um, three boys. Uh, you know, all grown. You know, out of out of college. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 28, 26, 24. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think what else. Pets. Three pets. I had a chocolate uh, lab named Paisley and uh, two cocker spaniels. And uh, that's. That's kind of, you know, kind of me, so. Cool. Awesome. Gosh. All right, Anthony, talk to me. Uh, Anthony Dorsey. Anthony Dorsey. Some people call me Tony. I am from, uh, what <laughs> What's the coolest thing you've done in the ATL? Coolest thing I've done here, I bought two properties. Sold here we go, that thing. Mm -hmm. I stole one. I got a tenant in one. I'm trying to get like this young lady and get someone. Um, what else? Uh, most see, difficult thing. Most difficult thing. Um, getting my bachelor's degree and then I would say getting this real estate license. It took me like two years to get it. So I failed and I failed again. And I went back and then I finally got it. That's, yeah. That's, yep. Personal um, parent. It's arc. Mm -hmm. And then what you wouldn't know. I love to cook. Even though I don't cook how I used to, but I really do love to cook. <laughs> <laughs> and then I also love to travel too. And I work at Delta part time, so yeah. Right. How's your wrist, by the way? It's getting better. Yeah. Um children pets? Two girls, twelve and six. She wants a lab. <laughs> She's begging me for a lab, but um Trying to, trying to work that out with the living situation and see how we're going to take care of the dogs and all that. Yep, yeah. exactly. 
All right, Kiara. Kiara. <laughs> I'm here. I really want to stand, but no one else is there. And go ahead and stand. No, my back will be to these two people. So I'm here. I'm extremely chatty. Um, I'm from Memphis. I really go wherever I want. I'm here because I got my real estate license, so I'm kind of trying to ground myself. The coolest thing I've done is I am a volunteer cheerleading coach. I kidnap little girls and say, you know, be your coach. I got a team. Um, the most difficult thing I've done. I'm a single parent, three and eight. They're very bossy. Boys or girls? They're both girls. Well, so see, there you go. It's, they're extremely bossy. And you shouldn't have had girls. I don't know. <laughs> um, the thing you would know about me is I only watch Japanese cartoons, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, that kind of oh, thing, yeah. and read. I don't do anything else. Except for talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great story in here. That is awesome. Is it break on? Oh, Maya! Because I know you so well. I guess so, um, yeah. Go. Um, my name is Maya. Uh, as you can tell from my subtle accent, I'm not from here. Um, I'm originally from Senegal, grew up in France and Switzerland and Morocco. So I don't think it's cool anymore because you beat me on the country. So. Oh my God. <laughs> I didn't see anybody go like over the 20 marks. I mm -hmm. thought that was cool, so I'm going to change I did that by the time I was 18. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, that's impressive. Yeah. Um, so I do also dabble in flipping homes. Um, I flipped four um, and got my license recently because I want to do more of those and invest more, and especially in short-term rentals and uh, unit properties. Um, traveling around the world, you see some very cool structures, uh, tiny houses, things like that, so that's what I'm thinking to focus on. Um, I think one of the uh, coolest things I've done in Atlanta, though, has been uh, for a month, I volunteered for homeless outreach every morning, 4 a.m., with the United Way. Um, it's just incredible where you wouldn't think about it, so guys pay attention more when you drive. Like, there is a lot of wealth and a lot of... Um, already here too. So just like if you can help out anyways. And then um I do have two girls, seven and five. Um they're bossy too. They're <laughs> they're very bossy. Uh, so I am so am I, so it's, it's a bad combo. <laughs> <laughs> and then what was the last question? Uh what that, would people not know about not you? know about me. Uh, I don't know if you wouldn't know by just me speaking, but I have three passports, but I'm not a spy. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, grew up in different countries. So there it is. I, I naturalized American. Um, after living here for 10 years and having kids here, traveling in and out with the kids, it was just easier to all have the same passport. I so can I ended up oh. just, I was like, okay. I totally so what, what are your other countries? Senegal? France and Senegal, yeah. And so you can just maintain triple yeah, citizenship? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All those countries allow you for multiple nationalities, including the U.S. They are like Some countries will tell you that you can only have two or only one, mm -hmm. but all of those countries allow for multiple nationalities. It makes it easy to go to Cuba. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what are you in the middle of right now? Oh. I'm selling my home. I listed it. That was my first listing when I got my real estate. And you license. helped you list it. And you did help me list it. She was very <laughs> patient with me. Uh, I got two offers on it uh, last night, so I'm waiting for the options. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm looking for a rental project, of course. I mean, why not make it more complicated, mm -hmm. right? So still, still trying to find that home. Yes. I have. Two fishes, <laughs> Cargo <laughs> and Nemo. Um, that's all I can handle with the travel because we go out of the country twice a year. And is your husband from Senegal? Yes, he grew up here in the U.S., but he's from Senegal. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I was born in Piedmont Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm usually the only yes. true native in the room. Um, <laughs> And my, um, let's see, but I mean, if, I love Atlanta. I'm just a huge Atlanta ambassador. Yes, went to, uh, bought lots of Olympic tickets and um, ended up sharing them with a lot of family members. Um, but 
that was that was big. Um, but oh, here's the here's the cool thing. When Marta first started, the day, the very first day, uh, they had a like open to the public, and my dad took us and we got on at the Brookhaven Marta station and we rode the Marta train. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't been on Marta. I'm gonna do that. And it's still the same size it was then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, um, most difficult. Well, sadly, my my ex wanted a divorce. So um, we've been married 14 years, and my babies were three and a half and five boys, boys, <laughs> and uh, and my golden retriever um, named Tarzan. Um, so yeah, I was like that just wasn't in the plan. It just was not. We got up there and said we're gonna be married for life. So the aftermath of that was you know difficult because he kind of made it difficult. But anyway, <laughs> thankfully, I mean that was back in '94, so it's been a long time, and we're everybody's good now. So my boys are about to be 30 and 27. Um, they're um, the best boys God ever made. Just saying, just saying. <laughs> and they are awesome. And so, I mean, even even though they're the ages they are, um, because everybody knows I always talk about my boys. Obviously, they're men now. But when <laughs> when I see friends at church, so how are your boys? You know. Um, so let's see. Tar Hill, sadly died at, at age 10, and then we had uh, brother and sister, Karen Terriers, for a while, uh, Lucy and AJ for Andrew Jackson, and then, because <laughs> Preston was doing a report, and now I have Pepper, uh, my Havanese, so she's my sleeping partner at the time, and I just love my family, my I have two siblings in Atlanta, one in Charlotte, and we're all super tight, and our kids are tight, and that's just the best thing. So um, I've been here six years. Um, I mean, that's when I got my license six years. I came via the McCarty group. You'll hear of or meet RJ and Jim. They're the best. We've been friends 30 years, and our kids went to school together. And Brad and I first met in junior high. We went through mm -hmm. junior high, high school, and college together. We've known each other a long time. My high school nickname is Stubbo, so you may hear him call me Stubbo, Stubber, Stubby, all the... I don't know where that came from. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, but anyway, I am so glad y'all are here. <laughs> so our um, objective, if you would, turn to the first page of the first chapter, because it gives a nice little concise at the bottom of the page. And I should say session. Boom. Um, so day one is. Janae, will you read these? Sure. In this chapter, uncover your big why and how to achieve it. Commit to daily lead generation to grow your business. Use influencing sales language to win clients. And be accountable to your big why and your life. Okay. So flip over to actually page 21. And so it, today is all about mindset. What are we going to think, Anthony? And we are going to take, we will take a 15 minute break at 11.15. Um, yeah. So in this business, you got to motivate yourself. Oh, hard dog. Hey, honey, I'm teaching Ignite. Can I call you back? Okay. Bye. Oh, you, you're good at that. <laughs> Sorry. She, um, that's Jessica Schulte, one of our agents. Um, so, uh, Tim, tell me something like when you got into real estate, what, what, uh, what's a good thing and a bad thing in terms of the good thing is what and the bad thing. For me, I think the good thing is being having the flexibility. The bad thing is being up and down. You know, you got to stay motivated. Like, yeah, and that's what I'm realizing 
Is, if my wife and I owned a rental property. That we owned a townhouse in Tuck, and we ended up selling it. So I, have, I think I have that in me, too. Um, I think the thing is, is just getting used to, okay, I don't have a, I know my check is not going to be a certain amount on every two weeks. Mm -hmm. I have to get out of that mindset and get into a business mindset. And that's what I have to do for me personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think that's I think <coughs> a pretty common. Um, Tia, what's relative to real estate? It's a good thing and a not so good thing. Um, well, I mean, it's, it just from your perspective, you know, coming in. Well, I've had my real estate license for several years. Okay, the voice of experience. But, then. but I never used it. Okay. At the time, I was laid off, and then by the time I got my real estate license, I ended up starting working for Coke. So I continued to do that. But seeing how working within corporate America, you can be there today and come tomorrow. So <laughs> Just saying. It's kind of like, let me try to develop something within me so that I can maintain myself without depending on a company to tell me what I will and won't do today or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And will or won't make. Right. And earn. Yes. Okay. Great. So the you, you are your own boss and no, nobody can fire you but yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ira, tell me from just your perspective, what's, what's a good thing about real estate, why you want to get into it, and but then there's that. I mean, you know, it's it's an uncapped income, and, you know, one of those things and stuff is that you can be as magnanimous as you want to be, you know, and that's what I love about that, an entrepreneurial spirit. I think time management and stuff is um, one, one huge hurdle. E either you're not busy enough or you're too busy and so trying to really be candid and honest about your schedule and stuff mm -hmm. is, is you know you have to manipulate that really well and know that's how to one of the points we're going to hit yeah you really have to know how to um, communicate with your clients you know and, and try and apprise them and always make sure you're always there you know showing up at like 50 percent of the battle and of the battle always doing what you say and that's one of the keys to being a good entrepreneur okay. Okay, Erin, what do you think? <clears throat> I would say, so I worked for Delta Airlines for six and a half years. And then, so I guess three years into that, two years into that, I'm on time. Mm -hmm. So the corporate world, Delta, I love Delta and the culture there, but the corporate world wasn't working for us anymore. It just you know, uh, I wanted to be a mom, I wanted to take him to school, and I wanted to drop him off. That didn't fit into the corporate world, and it doesn't, and that's fine. You know, no hard feelings. Um, so I decided I wanted to do something different. Uh, so I guess the main point would be flexibility. Mm -hmm. And then I am a very, I guess I have an entrepreneurial experience, like my dad. He's owned a lot of businesses. And mm -hmm. in the corporate world, the idea that you can't, go meet your next goal and achieve something greater and see that in form of pay or reward, immediate reward, you know, mm -hmm. is, um, it's frustrating right. and it's just not as exciting, honestly. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just more fulfilling to see your, um, you know, to have an uncapped income and to be able to, you know, put in more time and, you know, lose that reward. So a lot of people... I did it myself, you know, get paid on salary and work 70 hours a week and it doesn't really do much for you. <laughs> and it I, may be I have later, done but that, yeah, yeah, it does, <coughs> yeah. You, do, you reach a frustration point. And it, it gets more frustrating the more people that tell you how great you're doing that. Right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, um, so the uh, themes of you know, be your own boss, have the time, flexibility, scheduling, um, these are good things, unlimited income potential, um, but we're going to talk about accountability today because <coughs> accountability to your calendar and to your goals. So the, the reason, it, it is so easy in this business. I mean, hours, days, weeks can slip by and you haven't accomplished anything. So the uh, biggest thing that Gary Keller teaches is um, that your number one job is lead 
generation, mm -hmm. finding business, mm -hmm. filling your pipeline. So it's yes, you want now business, but um, you want something in the pipeline, you know, for uh, down the road. Um, and then, so you're you're going to be a realtor, but first you're a business owner, and you've got to find your client. We're going to cover so many different ways to do that, and um, how to find them, and how to do everything. We're going to cover it all in Ignite. Um, but he also says that the, um, I mean, he's a disciplined dude and systematic. So he advocates five days a week, and it doesn't have to be Monday through Friday, but five days a week that you put on your calendar that I am going to lead generate, and that takes many forms, from X to X. I mean, he says three hours, but within the three hours, <laughs> it's, um, there's some you know kind of prep, organizational steps. He talks about phone calling, but in this day and time, it's different. You know, it can be phone, but it can be other things as well. And then um, the follow-up, like putting what are the next steps you got to do. So it's not like being on the phone for three hours. Right. Um, Brad and I um, think that realistically, if you if you even committed to one definite hour of reaching out to people, text, social media, whatever, but that you just, you're continually reaching out to people um, because even though people know you, you may have a handful of friends, um, family members that were waiting for you to get your license and so they, they're going to, you know, they were, have plans and they're going to let you be their realtor, that will dry up. That's, that's not going to just go on forever. So intentionally getting the word out to everybody you know that now you're in real estate and then even once you they know it, um, you have to keep reminding them that we don't want to be obnoxious, annoying, <laughs> none of that stuff. So we say come from contribution. Uh, and I love the way Brad puts it in, in team meetings. Um, you want to become their trusted real estate advisor. So that means um, for everyone you know, you want to be the realtor that they turn to uh, when when they have a need or maybe just when they have a question. So we're going to start establishing ourselves as knowing something about real estate mm -hmm. and providing helpful um, information. But at the same time, it's like uh, they're parallel tracks. Um, you're establishing yourself as a trusted real estate advisor, but you also are investing in the relationship and that you care about them and their family because, you know, when you buy or sell a house, the whole family's involved and sometimes there are extraneous issues. Maybe it's because of a divorce or um, a parent, you know, gets sick and has to move. So even if you consider yourself an introvert, you need to be a people person with your clients, you know, because it is, it's their life, you know, it's not just buying and selling a car, buying and selling a home is a huge deal. And it's, um, so while you are lead generating, um, it's establishing your credibility and establishing your caring at the same time. So every time you reach out to somebody you know, um, whether it's a, a post or, you know, whatever form you take, let them know that, you know, or they call you, you know, you're glad to hear from them. Um, keep it personal and then, and then it will be, you'll kind of earn the right to talk real estate you know, when you, you care about them and ask about something that's going on in their life. How does that sign, I mean, I hear y'all are, you know, nodding and whatnot, but um, I know there's some people that are just, like when I have agents that are brand new to Atlanta and they don't know anybody, 
I mean, they may have sort of that kind of personality anyway, but they they aren't calling people they know because they don't know anybody here. So it seems like all of y'all do know people in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not flat dead new. Tim, do you have your hand up? I think for me and my wife, she used to get on me about this all the time because for years I worked as a locomotive engineer and I didn't have to talk to anybody. I just get on my train, I take it to point B, get off, get on another one, bring it back to Atlanta, and I do that for seven days a week. And she was like, "You got to get out of that." She said, "You got to start talking to people because if you don't talk to people, they're not, you know, they're just not going." Yeah, I had to. I yeah. was, it was by force. It was either mm -hmm. I just had to. I had to start talking. And, yeah. And, like yeah, and if that's not what you normally do. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. It is now. Now, uh -huh. now I'm okay with it. But for first, it was like she was, yesterday at church. She was like, "You gotta go, don't you? Don't you have an open house?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, I do. Let me go." Hmm. And I was at church just talking to people. You know, so I'm glad to hear you're talking. Yeah. Can I raise my hand? You have to give me permission. I know three second limit. I was taught to just say hi, and I noticed that if I'm just walking up the street and I say hi to people, they'll stop and be like, hi, who are you, what's your name, and we just start a conversation, and I'm like, all this started from just speaking to people. Mm -hmm. They watch you walk away, and even like, if I'm going to go and then come back out and they're still there, they'll, hey, you know, what are you doing here? And then we start talking. And now, it's a bad habit, because I gotta be like, hey, you know, I don't have to cut it off. <laughs> <laughs> but, just say hi. Okay, and Bob, you know a lot of people, and you live in a nice big neighborhood and know your neighbors, but are you anticipating any difficulty talking to, I mean, like, have you sent out a uh, blast yet, or have you done Well, I've, I've changed, uh, like, my LinkedIn profile and, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, working on, you know, some of my social media uh, campaigns, things I'm working on is it introductory, you know, uh, e you know, email e or whatever it is. Um, and what's interesting is that um, because there are so many realtors in my neighborhood, you just got to be careful on, mm -hmm. you know, perception, right? So uh, to your point, it's got to be more about, you know, um, maybe personal, uh, mm -hmm. you know, interaction as opposed to coming out, hey, you know, in real estate or, or whatever. So. Um, and it's trying to find that balance because what's interesting is that just recently, you know, I've always been aware of like things that, you know, uh, people send out or how they communicate. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I think we had a, uh, a realtor, not within our neighborhood, but this person basically put a flyer um, and a kind of a, like, you know, those uh, recycled, uh, recycling uh, bags you take at a grocery store that way you don't mm -hmm. use plastic bags. And what you do is you bungee, you put it in like a rubber band, and they like toss it in everybody's driveway. <laughs> well, I mean, the reaction from neighborhood, you know, neighborhood people is like, this is ridiculous, right? So, Look you know, there. it's on how you, you know, maybe your image is, you know, within the community and, um, or just, you know, so you got to pick the right vehicles to, you know, communicate. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out, so I've been working, has everybody worked with Terry Cummings? Yeah, who has <laughs> not met with Terry yet? Yeah, but I'm like everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Mia and Anna Corby, have you? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. I've met her, but I haven't met with her. Okay. Before. Yeah. But you recommend it, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, especially if you're you're new. Um, she has a lot of a lot of. She's basically a like kind of a, a coach, right? She's going to coach you in coach. terms of helping you think about your business. Um, you know, things that you need to put in place to be successful. So. Uh, he talks about your your 411, you know, in terms of establishing what your overall goals are, and so I've been doing a lot of that. So I've got all that work done, the eight by eight. Now it's kind of, you know, getting those, you know, in place and thinking about what the frequency is and what the message is, and mm -hmm. so. It's interesting you said something about like having so many realtors in the neighborhood, because like. You know, like a lot of, even talking to Terry or looking at the training online, they tell you to farm your own neighborhood. Like, that's where you <laughs> leave. You on the thing, yeah. Right, but there's always like probably four or five like realtors in any such neighborhood. And mm -hmm. it's just like literally, 
figuring out who on the in that neighborhood you have good relationships Absolutely. with, mm -hmm. and follow and say, hey, by the way, I just wanted to let you know I have this, but then talk about other things you know about them so that they don't think like you're just a thirsty realtor. I, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I, <laughs> I, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree with you exactly. Yeah. I, I think what I was probably trying to communicate was that you need to pick the right message right. and the right vehicle to communicate to your neighbors because if you don't, it could be a quick down rolling up right. and yeah, you know, and then all of a sudden you start getting a maybe a you know maybe not a positive you know vibe from you know friends and neighbors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> and it, and it's it's interesting because right now I'm trying to walk a, like a delicate balance because mm -hmm. because I know people who are going to be selling their house. So, and I know they have very close friends that are realtors, but it's like, you know, so there's a lot of subtle, you know, mm -hmm. subtlety around, you know. Um, uh, I think that, um, here's what I would do yeah. if I were in your shoes. And may not be what you want to hear, yeah. but because I'm brand new and have no experience, um, I wouldn't expect somebody to immediately list with me. Right. So I would approach them um, as, as an advisor um, and, you know, sort of, or, I mean, not like they're going to do all the work or anything, but um, to see if there's something that you can offer them you know, if it's a one-off or something to sort of establish your credibility, you know, it's not get the listing per se. But that's exactly what I'm what I'm trying to do. It's not like, you know, go for the, you know, the the, the hard sell. So, so it's almost like, hey, you know, and you know, to your point. So I've you know offered that you know as kind of advisor. You need listings or things about think about like. You know how to maybe stage your house, or mm -hmm. you know things, things that you about. need to do to maybe prepare. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and you see they they'll talk yeah. and they'll talk to other neighbors, and so <coughs> it won't be. And it's, it's kind of like uh, practice without the pressure. And obviously, you don't want that. That can't exclusively be what you do. What if you're saying, "Hey, you don't understand my license? Can I role play with you? Just see how good I can be." At, now me. I'm all about that. <coughs> I I. When I was taking it at night, and I called up somebody uh, up and uh, said, oh, I've got to do a listing presentation. Can I come and do a practice one with you? Now, you're not going to do that umpteen times, but, you yeah, know. If you're good, they might be like, no, what? She <laughs> just knocked it out the park. <laughs> okay, wait. Ann Corley had. And this is a general question. This and then you are. I'm coming out straight. I literally passed my license like a week ago. So I'm full no, on no, no, book. No, no. Yeah. Um, and my biggest, I guess, thing that I've got to mentally get over is that I'm afraid that I'm going to break a law day one. Oh. Like I, because they throw so much of the license law and contracts and everything at you that you're like, oh my gosh, I can't say anything or write anything down. Or, so I guess my question is, when we're going through some of our lists, like LinkedIn or doing social media blasts or stuff like that, what of that needs to be approved by Keller? Very good question. Um, so that we know, you know, I need to know what order I can do things where it's my business versus, or what does Keller's name need to be bolded on, like those types of things, so that we're not shooting things out and then coming back and saying, oh, okay, you. there's there's a distinction between um, on social media uh, paid advertising versus just a post. Mm -hmm. Okay, if it's if a post, there are really no rules. There, I'm sure they're going to come up with some guidelines. <laughs> But there aren't yet. Uh, the general rule on signs, like yard signs, um, that the, I mean, and, and coming from Greg, you must, because all of us, we, um, even though we're independent contractors, own our own business, but we're not brokers, we're agents. Okay, so to, we have to make sure that anything printed has Keller Williams Atlanta Perimeter logo. Um, and the uh, the main office number, and it has to be slightly larger than our name. Now that's printed material, you know. Um, the so like I said, they don't they don't have really established rules. But if you were to do paid advertising, if you're going to use, I guess I'm just saying like on 
like if we were to do things on LinkedIn or like do a post to Instagram or they Facebook. They have a brand guideline um, document that yeah. they can send you. I found it, I, I was just rummaging through like the whole internet and found it and it gives you guidelines as to how to use the logo, how to use the disclaimer, where to use it yeah. online. Yeah, I'm wondering like with email blasts, are they considered advertisements that can stand rules apply? That's what I'm saying. Oh, it's like, yes. oh, it can, can stand, stand rules apply. apply. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's like how to but read. that has nothing to do with Right. Mm -hmm. That's like, that's I know, but <laughs> I guess I'm saying like when, how do you know when to apply them? Or There's a style sheet. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Maya is going to send it to me and I'll send it to y'all. Right. Right? Yeah, I can do that now actually. I have okay. I'm saying some of the stuff we could be doing, but I just don't know. I'm like, where do I start and how do I not get in trouble? <laughs> You'll just get it today. Put those guidelines in your house, in your hands. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think that the biggest challenge is, you know, at least for for me, is coming in. It's like everything you don't know, right? Because it's like if you take, you know, take a step forward, but it's like, okay, what are the things that you know that could? I'm not supposed to do. Not supposed <laughs> to not do, but like, what are the things that you with the next, you know, two steps down the road that you should be thinking about, right? So I'm just thinking like my website, right? So that's one. So it's almost like you're doing all this LinkedIn, you know, pro profile, and then you send them to your website. What does your website look like? And you know, it should be in probably pretty good shape because you don't want to send people to the website and have them get frustrated, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay. Okay. So to that point, and I agree with you, Bob. Um, please, please, please. Uh, Thursday, January 31st. Please plan to come to that Webster, mm -hmm. Webster. Playster mm -hmm. website um, class. Um, so if you will experience some frustration over the next four weeks because you'll be ready to go in this direction, but then you think, oh, but then there's this, this, and this, and I have to know everything before I call, mm -hmm. and I have to know how to write a contract. No, you don't. What we want you to focus on over the next four weeks is building a pipeline. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to build a pipeline. I mean, part of building the pipeline is um, becoming a trusted real estate advisor. So a little, you know, real estate education, Atlanta market, uh, your own neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know, stats and stuff like that. If anybody um, and Maya can attest to this. Anybody has um, somebody say, I want to buy this house. Will you write the offer for me? Guess who's going to write it for you? I mean, it's, we are here to support you till you leave the nest and, and even afterwards. We, we will do practice um, purchase and sale, an entire offer we're going to do together in, on one of the classes. <laughs> Um, we're going to do mock, you know, buyer consultation, listing presentation, all the stuff. We're going to do all of them. So, but if something comes up before you graduate, <laughs> just say, I've got somebody. Right. Now, um, so you do not have to know all of anything in terms of functioning as a realtor. You will eventually, but just call, Diane and I know the same things, mm -hmm. and whoever was your sponsor should be willing to you know help you a little bit so um, you don't stress it um, but th there is something Bob to what you're saying about publishing a website mm -hmm. a URL when it's not functioning yet yeah. so you so when you mm -hmm. go and change your profiles on various social media sites maybe don't put the web address yet and then we'll come back when it's ready. So um yeah, I'll be stop and start. Okay, Ira. Okay, so I'll preface this by saying I, I have a lot of words and cliches and I kind of <laughs> and it's structure about my life about so real quick and stuff when Maya was talking about, you know, um I call it um being hungry and humble or humble and hungry. So when I present myself to folks, you know, and solicit their business so to speak, I let them know transparently. I'm your Huckleberry. You'll have every last bit of my energy. And so when I approach clients and stuff, and more to what Stacy said, is I try and help and educate. And that's my first two goals. And activity breeds your money. 
So if you're supremely active and touching bases with folks and stuff, then it'll breed, that activity will breed your money. And Stacey, you'll know, just like she said, don't be afraid to throw yourself into the in, into the, the lion's pit. She knows I come to her well before me being in Ignite. Right. <laughs> I, I haven't. Never I've, been, yeah, yeah. I've, been, I've been an agent for seven months now, and this is I'm just now in Ignite. <laughs> and and yeah. so what? I go to her. I go to Diane, and they help me muddle through what I'm not necessarily an expert in. But that's that's what this office represents to you, and that's mm -hmm. what their expertise is. They're here, they're here to help you guys facilitate your success because it means success for everybody. So yes, I'm, I'm it is just, all about I'm super y'all being successful. I'm super transparent to my folks and hopefully my energy supports them. All right, Tim, and then we're going to break. I, I, I did a, a host of open house yesterday in the spring, and I had seven people come. Um, and it was over at four, I think, at four, at 358. A uh, manager from Caldwell Bank. She's a Caldwell Banker manager. She came in. She said, "I'm sorry, I'm so late. Can I come in?" And I was just shutting down. I was turning off the lights, getting ready to walk out, and said, "Oh, by all means, go ahead." And I said, "My name's Tim Andrews. I'm uh, assisting Denise. She's the le listing agent. But if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask." And I just left her alone. Mm -hmm. And she came and back. Had she identified herself as? Yeah, she did. She mm -hmm. identified herself. She came back. She, she was like, "I like your style." She was like. I was late. You didn't stress about it. You didn't roll your eyes. You were just like, look at your watch. Yeah, I didn't look at my. I didn't do anything. I said, help yourself. Go right ahead. Went back and turned all the lights on. She walked the house and she came back and talked to me and asked me if I was interested in changing. Yeah, I think no. Caldwell Banker offers the downline too. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I, okay. I think they're the other competitor. Yeah, company. I was like, no, man, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> she said, how long have you been in the business? I said, a couple, couple of weeks now. <laughs> and she's like, oh, okay. She said, you have, you have, you don't have that hungry mentality. And she's like, that's what I like. Like, some people are just desperate and they want to like the shark. Pushy, yeah. yeah. Chum in the water. Mm -hmm. She's like, you don't have that. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I saved my money, so, you know, it's not a good deal right now. So the lady that has the listing, how long has she been in the business? Uh, no. About six years. It's yeah. Way to recruit, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That that. That's enough. We wouldn't do that. Yeah. But um. But well, I think your point was, yes, it, it, and you'll hear this in team meeting a lot. Be nice. Be nice <laughs> to prospective mm -hmm. clients. Be nice to other agents. I can't tell you how many times when I've um. Started out working with buyers, and you know you're um, making appointments, and you have to. I, I'll have um, the other agent from other companies go, "Oh, you've been so nice to work with, you know, just from being nice, right. you know, and put yourself in their shoes, because if you plan to stay in the business a long time, you not be pissy with people, right? And because <laughs> they will talk, and they'll black all you and talk to, about you to their office, so. I want to give you kudos for being so helpful. Like I've had, she's walked me through all these things. I have no experience. Um, offer. Well, first we did an offer. First we did an offer. Second, she walked me through all these things. I haven't been to Ignite one bit, and I haven't seen anything online. Uh, but she was just so patient. So if any, if anything like that comes up, let's just know that we have the resources. The second thing I would say is regarding campaign and all that stuff, most of these email marketing tools have already all the regulation built into it. They will, like the first email, yes, you might email everybody, but if they unsubscribe, that email marketing tool will never email them again. So Okay, but that's email. That's email. Like she was, she was, you were t saying earlier that stuff like that like worries you. So a lot of the, if you use the tools that are built in here, I looked at the regulations and the, because um, I'm a digital marketing manager uh, by trade, so this is up to snuff with all of the guidelines and the regulations. Even like a post on Instagram? Those are more like, a, those are a lot more flexible. You do yeah. not need to worry about those because it's like public domain really, nobody like kind of gets it in their email box, but if it's like an email... Right, you have to access yeah. it yourself. Okay, that's that's a good distinction, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm sure we'll die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take a break. Um, so...
come back at 11.35. Okay. Bathroom, water, coffee, bagels. I was going to tell you, I officiated it for many years. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I got out of it. Yeah. Yeah, you have to. They can call you up. They can get you
nothing. You can't find anything under like eighty thousand dollars. Yes, to find somebody that's off market. Like the wholesalers. Mm -hmm. I have a I have a couple of websites. Um, <laughs> my house <laughs> deals. That's um okay. I'll be so so if you have any on mm -hmm. yeah, there is a bunch of um. <laughs> and there are some and like that, so they just like get the property before it's rented. They go like crazy people sell them the house. Well, and they do it and then sell it right away. Turn around and sell it. If you can like, yeah. if you can Go become a wholesaler, well, that's time consuming. Mm -hmm. But it can yeah. take a lot of you can oh, make yeah. a lot of money. So yeah, yeah. now I actually like eight to ten thousand just for the just contract. Just for the contract. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. it. Yeah. They just want to offer it, so it's like they only make eight thousand dollars. I see a lot of guys on social media. That's what I am off on Tuesday. Like yeah, Monday, Tuesday, like Saturday. I haven't tried. Like Tuesdays when I'm at home. Well, so with the tax bill, especially in Fulton County, if somebody hasn't paid their taxes, the only time I had to work.
Arizona. First I had West Region, I mean fire West Coast. Yeah. 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 And then I went to the Blue Ring. Well that's the group I was in. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes, I supported him right before I left and went to uh, freestyle. Yeah, Okay. Can we rock and roll? <laughs> Is that everybody? So, um, the reason I hand was handing out those little bundles, because um, there, there are a couple of activities that, that I want you to do. Um, oh, so, can I borrow you? Uh -huh. All right. Um, if you would just flip to pages 21 and 22, and this is going to be actually homework. That's what you just handed out? Or? Yes, what I just handed out. Um, let me show you what it looks like. Oh, that's the first page. So, it is, um, I, I just think it's a better thing to do at home so you can really think. Um, this is all about your big why. So what is going to motivate you to keep planting seeds, to keep reaching out when you don't have an active client? Um, Jennifer Hannon, Huckabee Hannon, who will be your teacher on Thursday, she went a long time uh, when she first started before she had a closing. Um, I mean, I think pushing a year. I, I'm not positive. I'll let her tell you her story. But, um, you know, there, there's got to be something that that will, you know, I can't let you know, me, my son, my whatever down. I, I can't give up. Oh, thank you. These three ladies. Perfecto. So, um, what is your driving motivation, your whoop, stop your why, what will achieve what will achieving your goal mean for you? In what ways will your life change and what doors will open for you? So you can go crazy on this, you can, you know, really dream big and dream. That that's my my bottom line message about this is don't I just want to pay my bills. You know, you can do that with a salary corporate job. So, and and we will share those that want to um, on Wednesday, right at the beginning of class. Then, so that the what they want you to do, you know, answer those questions. Then on the next page, 22, um, put it together. So as a <laughs> yes, y'all balls heard of an elevator speech. You know, when you riding an elevator and you're with somebody else and they say, oh, what do you do? How, you know, how do you answer that? Um, so you get to the, the salient points and intrigue them enough that they want to continue the conversation. Okay, the big why is your... Um, uh, my big why is blank because it will... Uh, because I want this to happen and it will do this for me. So it's kind of tying the other ones together. So on Wednesday, I will be here and I want to hear everybody's big why. Um, does, is there any um, lack of clarity about that? Okay. Um, if you would flip to the next page, um, for those of you who have already met with Terry Cummings, so this is page 26, you have probably gone through this exercise. So, who, can I see a show of hands who have gone through this exercise? Yay! Have you? No? Have you? I've met with Terry. We started. 
She uses a that. different sheet though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um so what I'm gonna encourage is that um and the point of this is okay, if I wanna um net hundred thousand dollars how much property do I have to sell? You know, how many dollars of commission gross do I need to earn? And you back it up to, okay, if my average sales price is, mm, and um, so how many transactions do I need to close per month? And then, so if I back up 60 to 90 days, how many new clients do I need to be working with? So it's a mathematical way of, and, and, it, and it's a pipeline, you, you can't just, get a client and only focus on them, I mean, you can and you'll be sorry. You know, so it's um, it's a way of also trying, knowing, realizing, accepting <laughs> that yes, it takes work and when you meet somebody, you don't get a check that day, you don't get a check until later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So embracing that reality and um, so I'm going to encourage anybody that hasn't met with Terry to meet with Terry. Um, and then if, if, if you haven't already done something like this and you just want to meet with me, we'll, we'll do it one off. Um, so here's my friend, the lead generation funnel. Hi, funnel. I'm telling you, I love this diagram. Um, so when we're lead generating, in addition, you're always relationship building, always. Mm -hmm. You're providing uh, and you're establishing yourself as a trusted real estate advisor. But ultimately, you want to set appointments to get with people because real estate, I mean, if you're just talking to somebody on the phone, you think anybody would agree to let you list their house? They hadn't even met you. Mm -hmm. and, you know, to, to get a listing agreement, a buyer brokerage agreement signed, you will have to meet with them. So that means setting appointments. So lead generation, um, the first step is setting appointments, meeting with them, and agree to work with each other. Okay, and we're going to go over in great detail what those meetings look like. Um, so hopefully the appointment leads to agreement you know, that you're going to work together. That's what that's all about. <laughs> then you got to work for them and um, either sell their house or help them find a house. And your objective is to go binding, get under contract, and we're going to explain all about that. And then even when you get under contract, sadly, some things fall through. Sometimes, and you, for good reason, um, you have the inspection and you find out the basement just has rampant mold and the seller won't pay for the remediation and so your buyer during due diligence says, let's walk away and find another one, okay? Sound reason, but delay your payday a little bit, okay? So good to have more than one client at a time, you know, and good to, um, if, if your calculations tell you you want to have two closings a month, push yourself to go for three in case, you know, you have a setback with one of them, you know, and it gets pushed. <coughs> so, but Terry is your lead person on that. So, funnel, pipeline, these are your, these words are your friends. Um, we're one of the classes <coughs> How to get paid on time, um, February 6th, uh, after session 10, we cover, Diane will cover everything about how to um, structure your the, the paperwork you turn into the office so that um, Lynn LaCroix, our compliance broker, is happy and the back office is happy and um, there are no hiccups. Um, it covers how turning in your earnest money, uh, you know, submitting your loop for review, the different ways that you can get paid. You can just have direct deposit. You can have a, what we call a pay at close, where the closing attorney actually cuts your check. Um, 
So all of those details are in that class and we have a document that goes along with it. So you want to come to that, <laughs> that class. So um, all the rules about money. Um, if you have a referral, if you have, if you're, you have to terminate your transaction, what do you do with the earnest money? All of those details are covered. Okay, flip to 31. So, Hal Williams has this thing, the daily 10-4. The daily 10-4. If you just do your daily 10-4, by heck, you'll get some business. Now, it's hard to keep up with the daily 10-4. And what it's, um, but throughout this class, um, you know, some of the instructors will say, are you doing your 10-4? So, again, with dated language, it's 10 phone calls followed by 10 follow-up notes um, to the people you've talked to. Um, just, hey, great to talk to you yesterday. Hope Bobby wins his game. You know, real quick. Um, 10, 10. Um, adding 10 more people to your database. Um, I'll come back to that. And then over the course of a week, previewing 10 homes just to be uh, getting to know inventory. Yes, you can look online, but you need to actually walk through some houses, um, take advantage of open houses on your mobile app. If you, wherever you are, you can hit open houses and it'll tell you where some are, generally the weekends. Um, because you, again, with the trusted real estate advisor, you want to become savvy and get your lingo, you know, to, oh, that's a craftsman style house and, you know, some of that stuff in. It helps if you've seen it with your own two eyes. So, um, we will, on Tuesdays after team meeting, if some of our agents are holding a caravan, which is an agent open house, um, I will go um, and tag along with me and kind of shade the ropes protocol. And you can go on your own, but, so, it's a tall order. It's doable, but it is a tall order to keep up with a daily 10-4. I'm just saying. Some modicum of that, um, and you know, some people just cannot write a handwritten note. You know, it hurts their hand. The point is, it's back to that daily lead generation. For an hour, you are reaching out to people. Um, that's what. We're, they're going for so, um, Mia. What's one? So ten, the ten four. What what would be one of the? So we got four four ten categories. Yes, ten. Yes, yeah, contact. <laughs> so what's that's one? What's another one? No. No. Another one. Mm -hmm. What? I can't hear you. Visit ten houses in one day. No. <laughs> one day. Oh, the preview is online. Yeah. That's they, intended they to be online. Oh, okay. oh, all right. <coughs> that's not clear, though. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's definitely not clear. <coughs> right. <laughs> this is pretty high. <laughs> really? You never get anything done. Okay, so we're previewing homes. We're contacting people. We're writing notes. That's optional. And um, what's the other one? We're feeding our database. Um, a, a nice objective is that by the end you've got 200 good contacts. So quick poll around the room because I know some of y'all have already been working on yours and putting it in. You've already got way more than that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I mean the the 10 for some of y'all are fortunate you've come you know you've been working a long time you got big databases and I mean you already contact list but if you don't if there is there anybody in the room that doesn't have 200 um, that that's you know the encouragement to keep working on that question I was just thinking when I was this is I was working building leads for this guy to a tip agency, he made me call um, 
he wanted me to make 50 calls a day. Because okay. out of those 50, he might get five that he would interview, he might get one client. And I did that for weeks. So I just was thinking, I need to make 50 calls a day. <laughs> you can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I'm stealing it from him. Hey. It works And now. in, um, you'll hear about Bold. It's a class, seven weeks, full day, once a week for seven weeks. Cost eight hundred dollars to do it. I don't advise people that have not even graduated from McKnight to jump into it. Um, but it's about ramping up your business, and so a lot of emphasis on your lead gen. You're expected to have twenty contacts or real estate conversations per day, a hundred a week. These sheets, you know, and you have to a lot of accountability, and then if you Another level of accomplishment is to do what they call a bold 100, and that's to get 100 in one day. So you lock yourself in a room with lots of lists, and maybe you're using an auto dialer or not. Are and they you just in completed calls or just dialing calls? Mm -mm. You got to be completed calls. Like talking to somebody, and so, you know, we, it, for most people, it was like eight to ten hours of, you know, only bathroom breaks. I mean, it just sounds miserable to me. But <laughs> that's why I made that they sound. give you a pen and they, you know, it is. So, right. And when you make the 50 calls, do you actually talk? Do you keep calling until you talk to 50 or you just play? He, he, my, his minimum was 50. Mm -hmm. That I had to just at least call. If the phone hung up, he want, if they answered and hung up, he wanted to call back because he said that didn't count, but someone was obviously mm -hmm. there, and he just kept it going like that. And since I was good at it, he started well, adding it. <laughs> right. But okay, so you mentioned the stuff like that, they, they give you a pin for reward, or they stick a fork in you? I <laughs> 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 reward. Okay. <laughs> okay, so daily 10-4, I just want to make sure <laughs> that you understand that language I'm not going to beat you up and go, you know, you gotta do that. because I, I consider it a little bit dated and some of you already have way more than 200 contacts in your database, so the point is daily or five day a week lead gen. Mia? So I've always wanted to um, not really wrap my car, but mm -hmm. kind of put my, I don't know if it's a good a idea, like your key yeah. magnet. Yeah, you can do that. Is that a good idea? Any problem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I know some agents have done that, or they. Jake Duffy used to have. He drove a Jeep with, you know, the outside mount spare tire, and he had that wrapped. And um, you absolutely. I know nowadays that. people will pay you to wrap your car to have mm -hmm. So you might as well. And you may have noticed. I've emailed you. Maya sent me the KW Brands regulations, <laughs> and so I've, I've forwarded it to all of y'all. Thank you. Uh, okay, so next page is a little more about the. So what's the four again? Hey, Z, four okay, four activities. Calls, okay. No. Got it. Okay. Database additions and um, home previews. That's it. Got it. Okay, so it's the four that we just talked about. Okay. Yes. I yeah. thought there were and the, it, it the four activities. Could be on the chat. Inside. Could be on. The chat. Uh, just. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, on page 35, the only thing I want to, the point of what they're talking about is, this is another tellerism going from E to P. E to P. Right? Have you heard that, Katie? Going from E to P? Uh-uh. Well, so some of the signs that are down off the wall now are going from E to P. And um, it's from um, entrepreneur entrepreneurial to purposeful. Um, an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial person, they know they own their own business and they'll make an effort here, make an effort here, whatever. A pur purposeful business owner is going to get a, a calendar and a schedule and they are going to, they're driving their business to achieve their goals. And they, so it's a whole lot of, you know, responsibility, um, accountability. So that's, top agents are purposeful. Right. Top successful agents are purposeful. 
ones that are just floundering tend to stay in the, <laughs> the E. So that's the point of that. But moving to E, from E to P, now you know what that is about. Um, okay, now we've got a couple pages on scripts. 38. I, for one, don't like that word. Me either. I'm with you. <laughs> Sometimes I just say dialogue, whatever. Just because it sounds canned. I mean, the word <laughs> makes it sound canned. Here's the point, however. Um, uh, when you know what you're going to say and you say it consistently, um, you do gain confidence. You don't have to stop and flounder and think about, you know, what what to say next. So, and this this here are the areas and where if you're making phone calls, um, now you're not going to say the same thing when you're calling people that you know because they're different, you know, when you know them in different capacities, but. Let's say you decided to call a list of expired owners um, and there, there are certain typical objections they make like, why are you calling me? My house didn't sell and I don't want to sell it. You know, they can be crazy. But anyway, you're calling through a list. <coughs> can you imagine that knowing what you're going to say and how you're going to handle objections that are thrown up at you, that that would be beneficial. Yes. So practicing objection handlers, um, when you do a listing presentation and um, buyer consultation, when you get to the point of, I know what I'm going to say, I don't even have to look at my notes, and um, I, I know what I'm going to say and I, I believe it and it's going to sound like me. Um, it's a good feeling. So typically you don't like go, I'm going to memorize this whole listing presentation. You do subset. For instance, um, someday a prospective seller might ask you to lower your commission. Can you imagine that? <laughs> well, there are ways of handling that. Wouldn't that be a good thing to get real comfortable with so you know exactly what you're going to say? when that comes up. Okay, so what I'm trying to show you is that there are scenarios, specific questions that it, I would say it would behoove you to memorize a, uh, you know, script, dialogue, answer, um, so that you are not undone by it, you know, because you want to stay on top. <laughs> My laughing. Okay. So, to that point, on uh, 39, they said, you know, memorize and turn on. <coughs> Here is a, on page 40, here is a, um, a system, and I have done it, and it does work. Um, it, it's a combination of reading things out loud, because when you, when you add on an additional sense, of your five senses, in addition to just reading, um, your brain pays more attention and, and takes it in. So reading out loud, standing up, looking in the mirror, smiling, um, anyway, it, it actually does work. And um, I, this is also homework. Um, I want you to, um, there, well, I'll give you some, I didn't copy in this, some, um, I'll pick something short that's like three sentences and um, I'll, I'll send it to you that if you think, yeah, I need to know how to say that. So it'll be worthwhile and I want you to, I mean, if you have another great way of memorizing, knock yourself out, but using these steps on I encourage you to at least experiment with what's on 40. Yes, ma'am. I don't know. Oh, I thought you were with me. Oh, Sorry. I'm being annoyed again. So, I'm in property management. And when I have to call my leads, I have a mirror on my desk. 
Uh -huh. And I just look at me and I smile. And when they get on my nerves, I'm like, so. <laughs> <laughs> it really does work. They come in and they're like, are you the girl I talked to you? So nice. And I was like, I had a rude day. If you only knew. <laughs> no, all the top agents, this is highly recommended that you stand and you have a mirror. I mean, you don't have to stand. But because it lifts, you know, your diaphragm or something, you um, you sound peppier um, and it's it's more pleasant. Yeah. I just want to share if y'all ever come in my office, I'm not a narcissist. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, so I'm, I know I'm going fast, but y'all are all adults. You all have other work experiences, so this is not the first time you've heard these things. What? Yes. Yeah. Just real quick. So with these new scripts that it's talking about in 41, are we going to have those? Or is there somewhere? Uh, well, There's if you book. choose to buy the book, they're in the book. But okay. I don't you like the particular ones that they have for this exercise, so I'm, I may throw another one at you. Okay. This, I mean, now, if we have this somewhere to go over, <coughs> that's what I'm asking. Where oh, do find uh, yeah, it? that's what I, I was okay. saying. I'm going to send it okay. to you right okay. after class. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the book, uh, remember back at the... If you buy a book, you get the script book. However, it's also online. Yeah, online. You know, it's uh, all this is everything in here is on online, and I'm going to demonstrate how you get to it. But let me tell you, do not be shy about referencing the script book. Not everyone is going to sound like you, and you love it, but. Um, Especially when you see the word objection. I'm looking wrong. Um, yeah, really? Um, staging objections. The sellers, I don't see why this is so important. What's your comeback going to be? Do we really have to make this repair? Why can't we sell the house as is? No. You know, these are the real type things that come out of seller's mouth. Um, you can so go online. Uh -huh. All right. To that point, let me fire up. Let's see where it's going. Let you ignite. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have my coffee. I'm sorry. <laughs> Here we go. All right. You okay? Let's just listen to this little fella talk about uh, script. Hey, fella. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Jeff Glover, and I'm going to tell you the top five things that you need to know about using scripts. Step one, you're going to need to get your scripts from a top agent in the office, your team leader, a math coach, or of course, Keller Williams University. Step two, we're going to need to do a total transformation of instead of talking and telling, of asking questions. Selling isn't telling, selling is asking a series of questions that lead to desired response. So instead of talking so much, we need to get in the habit of asking questions. And asking questions gives us control of the conversation. Control of the conversation gives us our ultimate outcome, which is an appointment set or closing. Step three, we need to listen with good intention. Well, what I mean by that is we need to listen to their answers instead of just listening to them talk and asking another question that comes to mind. For example, instead of asking a seller where they're moving to and then going on to the next question, how soon would you like to be there, ask them where are you moving to and when they give you a response, ask them what takes you there. Step four in becoming better at scripts is we need to learn to mimic, mirror, and match the prospect. What I mean by that is we have to listen to their tone of voice. We have to speed up or slow down based on how fast the prospect is talking. That means when they respond and say, we're moving to Toledo, oh, Toledo, that's exciting. What takes you there? 93% of communication is body language and tonality. And that means only 7% are the words that we say or the questions that we ask. Step five, we need to take these five points and practice them daily. If you think of NFL teams, they practice 50, 60 hours on the practice field for a one hour game. Our game is our presentations and our appointments, and we need to practice daily everything that we've learned every single day before we leave <laughs> When it comes to scripts, my biggest aha is that everybody has their own scripts. We're pre-programmed to have scripts 
and we're talking and asking questions that are scripted. However, what we found is that most of our own scripts are no good. And so we have to learn the right script, the right questions, to maintain control of the conversation. Thanks for watching KW Connect. Make it a great day. Okay. Woo! Something good you heard from that. Or enlightened. Control the conversation. Right. And how? <coughs> Ask questions. Mm -hmm. Ira? So, you know, I grew up in the hotel industry and, and what we used to do whenever there was an opportunity, not a problem, okay, is we, we were always listening intently and then we would regurgitate and restate so that the person that you're communicating with would always know that you heard what they said. Mm -hmm. And then past that, that's, that's where if they were incited, they potentially got a piece. But in this particular scenario, um, when you're communicating and you're trying to be in sync with their goals, that's where you become the expert. Even if you're a neophyte, you know, you can help to accomplish those goals by going above and beyond with the research. So the communication part of it, and like you said, you have to adapt to their stop. Right. And um, I think, <coughs> you said, when, you, when you're listening and you uh, not just repeat that, but you respond to it like, let's say, the woman's moving to a Toledo and it's to be near her grandchildren. Well, that's, that's a good, happy thing, you know, show some enthusiasm. And um, as, as Maya Angelou said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Hey, just saying. So, um, yes, it's business, but it's people business. So, um, yes. Three seconds again. <laughs> well, um, we're met. It's I, I, I've been doing property management for about four years, but this last company, one thing I took with me is it's mandatory for us to talk to the person at the desk at least seven minutes before we take them anywhere, because in that seven minutes we should have learned why they're there, what they like. I mean, you have to talk. So in that talking, you kind of warm them up and you find out what you need to be asking and what you need to be looking for to keep them interested if they're looking for a big bathroom or closet space. So seven minutes before we even walk. Wow. Okay, seven up again. Cool. I gotta go and do it. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Something else I wanna show you, so. No, just last in French. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that. Canada. <laughs> oh. Okay, in, let me go back to the, I'm just going to show you, oh, there we are, live stream. Um, I keep saying the book's online. Well, here we go. So I've logged into my KW. Here's my landing page. Click education up here in the black bar. Education. Go to the box, anywhere in the box, click Ignite, and say, what? Scroll down, and um, student resources, and in each of the 12 boxes, you've got, uh, I'm going to talk about the mission at the end of class, but you've got your manual, Canadian version if you'd like, um, <laughs> and at the very bottom, there are the toolkits, the scripts. So I'm just saying, if you want to save forty dollars and you're not a, a paper person, that is your option. Totally thank your you. choice. Facing. What? I said thank you. Mm -hmm. Option. You're that? welcome. You're welcome. Um, these in the middle will come down the road, so they don't go crazy printing everything yet because you don't need to. So now the other um, Keller Williams has a tool for tracking your daily 10-4. How exciting! Okay. <laughs> now it is actually a, a cool tool, but it takes about <coughs> four clicks to get there. There's no direct way. Like you have to log into my KW, click Education, click Ignite. Scroll down and click my tracker. 
and if you want to, let me show you. I've got all y'all in here um, for this class. And so enter daily 10-4. Here we are. And if you, let's say you just added one, two, three, four, five, it would show it there. And then it tabulates and does reports. So it is a perfectly fine tracking tool. Uh, I guess it always goes database, connections, notes, and homes. And if you want to use this, you are welcome to, and I will not fuss if you don't. Only because it's simple to use, it's a pain to get to. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, yet yeah, you can get to it on your phone, but you still have the same number of, I guess, to here, to here, to here, to here, to here. To Does it only site. track numbers and not link back to the CRM? Okay. Yeah. I think that was my question. Whatever mm -hmm. CRM is. So here, let me see. Class reports. So at the end of each week, this is using Flash, so it's slow. Anyway, but I've, I've made you all aware <laughs> of it. Okay. You'll see. It'll come up. Um, yeah. But speaking of, okay, so it would, so you know, who's in, who, one through five. And it is cool to see, um, I mean, this is a report I would run and reveal. But it's, I, I found in previous Ignite classes that a certain subset of the class will consistently use it, but not everybody. So it's not quite fair or meaningful to do these comparisons when some people, they're keeping track of what they're doing. I mean, I highly recommend that if that you keep track of your activities, uh, even if it's just between you and yourself, of how many conversations you had, um, because you want to be able to look back and go, okay, I did, I put this much effort in, I did this much work, and here's what it yielded. Or, I did, did this and it yielded nothing. Or, you know, I really didn't do anything, and I got nothing. You know, so it's, to have that conversation with yourself, it, it's hard if you don't keep track of it. To that point, we're going to talk calendars for a second. Um, this is a passion calendar. Passion planner, excuse me. But it's basically, you know, a daytime. Um, whether you're completely, and I used to be just exclusively um, Gmail calendar. But I'm starting to use this more, well, for one thing, it gives me uh, places to write things. So I can keep track, whereas, you know, you've got an appointment on your phone. I mean, I tend to make them there, but I'm not going to go back, and even if, I mean, I could put something in the notes, it's just not really designed for that. Ultimately, when KW Command rolls out, which is to be mid-February, and that is going to be our end-to-end -end CRM, transaction, place, everything, yay! So <laughs> we will, um, we won't have necessarily eEdge, which is owned by a third party, dot loop, which is owned by a third party. These different places we have to go to put things. Um, um, <coughs> you will be able to, because you'll have your contacts in there, and the um, when you're doing your lead generation, you have it um, accessible, and you can do this on your phone, too. And so you can track what you're doing, you know. Just talk to Sally, call her back in two weeks. Oh, you can even tell Sally, honey, you can dictate it. And it'll go into your CRM. So, so who's going to try vision and transfer all the existing contacts and notes? Here's how it goes. Um, how it's going to go. Right. Of all the agents, <laughs> um, of all the agents in the office, 300 residential agents, um, I bet fewer than 25% keep their contacts in eEdge. Okay. Um, because eEdge has limitations, it's not the be-all end-all. Right. And it's 
several years old. It has its good points, but um, some people are using top producer, um, referral maker. Yeah, um, there. Everyone will have the opportunity to upload their contacts if they want to, and it'll be that either either you link with your eEdge and it happens automatically, or just like I helped y'all um, with a spreadsheet and then maybe you had to rearrange the columns a bit, there's one of those for command. Okay. So, um, and it's the, the order is a little different, but it will be the same process. You'll export from wherever it is now, um, if it's not eEdge, and rearrange the columns and then upload. You can even literally drag and drop it in there. Okay. The, the, but it has to be in the right sequence. Yeah. Using the so, template. They give us template, right? Well, I'm not sure that it's widely available because, of course, it's still in labs. Right. I right. have it. Okay. So, um, but yeah, there won't be any barriers to entry. And, okay, so let's talk about calendars. Um, a strong um, living by your calendar. Now, I'm a mom, I was, you know, and I was an at-home mom, and, and I've been a working mom. Here's the thing I had. Um, mine? No, I oh. have mine. Oh, well. Um, and things come up. Kids get sick. Tim's son gets sick. He's the da super dad now. Um, and what Keller advises is that Oh, well, turn in your, um, yes, what page is that, Janae? Um, 52? Yeah, 5253. Let's look at that, and then let's talk about how realistic that is. The, the suggestion is you roughly follow a routine doing your lead generation in the morning because you're fresher. That doesn't work for everybody. Mm -hmm. The point about um, living by your calendar is not that you fill your calendar. Mm -mm -mm. You simply calendar your most important thing, the, the, the must-dos. And that includes doctor's appointments. I mean, we all do that. You know, you've got something like that. Um, you calendar your must-dos, and if something comes up, you move it. That's it, such that you can't keep that appointment with yourself. So what, again, homework, what I want you to do is look at the what their suggested, you know, operating. Um, like, um, Aaron, look, if you got the same, yes, read, I don't have it right in front of you, so what does it seem doable to you? It tell, tell me why it wouldn't work for you. Sure. 6 to 7 a.m. wake, personal time with family, and workout. 8 o'clock in the market center, respond to email calls. Um, I have to take my son to school at 7.30, so none of those things would... I'd have to get up earlier. There's not going to be any family time at 5 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. And then, you know, I'm not going to get into the office until a little later. So a, a lot of the things may have to be adjusted or, you know, swapped. So Really, and in the... Um, it's not the specific times; it's the sequencing. Mm -hmm. I think is the right. most important. Is the it may work better message. for me to, you know, have my personal time after I take my son to school. Exactly. Or work out at 4 p.m. instead of 7 a.m. You know. Exactly. Exactly. On the, but the the thing that jumped out. Um. On the very first one is you have two in dark gray. Yeah, yeah I like the color code. That's so, um, are those the non-negotiable? The, the, those are, um, strongly the mind you, this is during Ignite. This is I'm only while you're in theory. the class. Okay. Only, sorry, I didn't say that. I will this say is that. only while you're in Ignite that your priorities mm -hmm on the days of class are attending class and and doing your homework, you know. 
like, if you don't want to interact with in my tracker, I'll tell you, I don't care. Um, but attending class and doing your homework. Right. Now, that's days you're in class. Um, and this is assuming that you go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, which we used to do. So the next page, Tuesday, Thursday, they're saying, in our case it would be Tuesday and Friday, um, you don't have class, so you're just, you know, lead gen, complete your mission. And the other things are, uh, but again, they put that in the morning because your energy level is higher. Um, then on the weekend, uh, they're recommending that you get get it in your head. Okay, I'm gonna maybe hold an open house. I'm gonna preview homes. Um, I'm gonna knock on doors. Look at that. I'm telling you, they got it all figured out. <laughs> so, um, and then there is. I didn't put this in your packet, but there's a. We'll talk about later about. Okay, once you're done with the night, then what should it look like? <laughs> but the so the point is to focus on the gray thing. Now, um, to that point, to talk oh so briefly about missions. About what? It's homework. I have a quick question about this. So Lay it on me. It may be me, but the absolute worst time for someone to call me to talk to me about business, mm -hmm. like, or try to get my business, is 3 to 4 p.m. That's true. Especially if I'm at work. It pisses me off. Excuse my language. I think it's because like you've been at work all day, you already yeah. got pent up, and yeah. then you're like, "What do you want now?" And right. you're trying to get off of work. Yeah. Morning. Totally you hear like you. That is a I totally, totally hear you. <laughs> That's why I get to call home. Like everybody's like got needs another coffee. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> do not live and die by these times. Yeah. The yeah. point is what your priorities should be of what I'm going to get done. Today. Right. Get it done when it works for you. Right. Just remembering the principle that your energy is um, greatest typically in the right. morning as opposed to three to four. <laughs> don't do the three. Now if you if we talk about me calling you back at three PM, then I don't want you to have to agree on <laughs> Okay. But in the morning, my first, first call, I'm gonna call in the morning and then I might do my follow up call. Okay. Yeah. Um then it, uh, I, did, I did put this. Turn to page 56. So I didn't give you 56. Never mind. We'll talk about that later. Okay. So, calendar. Um, Anthony, do you? What kind of calendar do you use? And do you like with your your driving or whatever else you're doing? Uh, is it in your calendar? To be honest, my day is very. <clears throat> I'm not a planner. I'm really spontaneous. So I just, my mind state is just like, you wake up, you know what you gotta do. If I'm gonna drive, say I'm gonna go drive, I get up at 4, I'm gonna drive from 4 to 8, 4 to 10, or if I gotta come here at 10 o'clock for the meeting. But my day is really spontaneous. And it depends on if I gotta do something for my girls, if I gotta go pick them up, drop them off, appointments. So I, I've never been a person where I could just really plan my whole day out. Right. And I am, um, Definitely not saying plan every hour. It will never work. <laughs> um, could you imagine just uh, like you know on days that Ignite meets, it starts at 10 o'clock. Um, but let's say after Ignite, could you imagine uh, putting on your calendar uh, that from 10 to 11, you're going to do some sort of business development, lead gen, and if something comes up and you got to run, you, you move it to another hour that day, so you still put in that one hour. That's the that's the big rock. Mm -hmm. um, so that when you're in ignite, it's time to class and getting done whenever anything you need to get done. But we, like I said, we want you to build the pipeline so you have um, some people to get started with, you know, before we end or right after we end. This is really a self-help to get into a cadence and kind of build the habits that we don't have yet, I think. <coughs> I agree. Right? I agree. So whether we rearrange it or not, it's just like doing it repeatedly. The, the, the times are not sacred. Right. It's right. the... Activity. Committing is the right. activities and and right. which leads me to accountability. Right. Um, 
during at night, if you want to, you don't have to um, have either one person or maybe a group of three, and I'll get back to you, um, sort of accountability slash script partners, right. uh, and da, 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 da. look at 59, page 59. And 60. Um, so the idea is that amongst yourselves, um, either before we break or afterwards, you say, "Hey, you want to be accountability partners?" And it, it's, it's really a support group, you know, to get through this. But also, you you set goals, you know, and you share them with that person, and then the next time you meet you fess up to whether you met them or not. Like, I'm going to make um, 25 calls this week, or I say calls, but I'm going to talk to 25 people this week. And, you know, you be honest, because it's, you need to be accountable to yourself, mm -hmm. and it's, it's kind of like practice to, but you don't have to do this. But, um, also, it, and remember when I say scripts, we're just focusing on <coughs> objection handlers or you know just specific you know sentence, paragraph, whatever. Not not a whole speech. So let me ask you a question. So um, a contact, right? Mm -hmm. So making you know ten contacts a day. What are your thoughts about text? And the only reason I'm saying mm -hmm. that is because right now with you know, I, you know, I've got boys who are 28, 26, 24. You call them, they're not going to answer the phone. Correct. <laughs> so, Correct. So, I'm going to text you right back. What do you mean? It, it, exactly. You know what? I, no, so I'm, I'm all for texting. Um, to count it as a successful text, it needs to be response. two ways. Right, exactly. Absolutely. So what I was, you know, Now, it's hard to get into a lengthy conversation about real estate, but, but if initially all you're doing is making contact with people and engaging them. Well, because uh, the reason I'm asking is because I have, you know, with my, my sons, right, they have extensive, you know, uh, network of friends that are all coming up on being first time home buyers. Um, you know, so by engaging those that are probably, you know, looking for properties, it's just like in the business, you know, trade contacts, let's get you on a, you know, whatever, you know, type of social media because. Like I can call them and never talk to them. I'll mm -hmm. send them a text, and to your point, in five seconds, it's like, what's up? And you know, so. <laughs> well, let me tell you. Oh, last week, yeah, I sent all y'all an email. Two days went by, Nothing. no response. I don't know if I was in that group. I no, you weren't. Yeah, I sent a text. text. Did you ask for a response? No, and then you gave a group text. And yeah, then I, I did a group text, text yeah. and. You know, you got a few responses. Yeah. So, so if I may, all right, going back to the calendar for a second. So I didn't even realize it until you started talking about it. Um, that calendar has been part of my religious business practice for a, almost a decade. The physical calendar. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't realize until you started talking about it is that I have a sequential process that I didn't even realize that I had. So I write all of the important dates and all the things that are coming up to memorialize the things that I have to do. The folks that I have contact with and stuff are also in that calendar. Okay. With that being said, once I make contact with them, then it moves over into another sequence for me where I've actually listed them as a prospect. And then I actually result it. And so if I wind up having a consummated contract in construction and or real estate, so it goes through that process, goes calendar to list to contract slash folder. And so I didn't realize that until you said it, but you know, there's always a past and a present and a future to your business. What you're doing in the past catch ups to here and now, and then it presents your future. Okay, and when you talk about texting, so my current buyer clients, I met them because they were renters at a property that I was working at. We started text dialoguing and emailing, but there always has to be at some point a face to face with that client. So what I did is I just scheduled through their form of preferred contact our face to face to consummate our deal and to take them shopping for their houses this past weekend and beyond. So that calendar is immaculate. And when you talk about an impromptu type of day, it still doesn't mean you should be writing down what you hope to accomplish on that day in that calendar 
because if you miss it because you weren't noting it, then it could be a bad yeah, result for re- whoever it was it. that you hope to have had as a client. You only get a chance to make a first impression and right. follow through. And showing up is 50% of the battle. And if you miss that a moment, then they're going to dismiss you because there's at least 12 or 13. Plenty of other agents There's 13 around. in this room. There's 300 <laughs> residential agents in this office alone. And they'll find mm-hmm. somebody else aside from you, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Anthony. Well, one thing I will say, I think it depends on really how much time you have. Um, if, you, if you're working a job versus if you're a full-time agent or depending on how much time you have to dedicate to real estate, that's going to make a big difference on how many people you're interacting with throughout that day. So okay. I think Stacey will tell you, I'm as good find on time as anybody, but I don't miss anything. I, I just make sure it's extended. If I have the ability to go ahead and, and say that, hey man, I'm super happy, you know, I want to contact with you. Today's not good, tomorrow's not good. Is there a day that we can schedule? That's how you, you push it out if they're agreeable to it. Yeah, just, yeah, delay. And yes, everybody's plates are at different levels of fullness. Some people have children at home, some people don't. Um, a, as an example, so. It, it, I'm, I'm really trying to focus on the concept so, um, and what will be helpful for you because um, you know, I mean, you want to get busy, you want to get clients and right. as soon as you do, woo, there are all these things you have got to do. So, um, Kira? Three seconds, I know. I had this idea while you were talking about scheduling because everyone doesn't look at it the same way. Do you watch football, basketball, any games? So I was just thinking, I don't have like cable, but I watch Kindle. So as a reward, what if I said I have to like do it before I watch my show? And then I'm going to tell my boyfriend, he's really mean, so he's going to be like, did you make the call? No TV. And then it's like, I'm going to make the call, talking about TV. And then two, I do work, I work full time, so I'm using my PTO to be here. And I will go in an hour early, so I work two hours, come here, and then I go back to work for two hours, and then I'm taking that. But most of my time, um, I did tell them since we were doing it that way that my 15 minute breaks and my hour lunches were not to be disturbed, so I can make my call. And then, unfortunately, I don't have a life on Sunday. Well, I'm being real good, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no life on Sunday. But having a business accountability partner and somebody at home. Will do because I'm talking about unplugged. Did you finish reading the book? I hadn't. Even, I didn't even. I was scared to um, retake my test because I failed the first time. To the point where um, he he picked the date and like my cell phone, you know. Mm. And of course, it was in like I allowed it, but it was like serious because he was like, "How bad do you want it?" Because sometimes I'd be like, "Give my phone back," and he'd be like, "Do you want to be a real estate?" And I'd be like, "Hold the phone. <laughs> Take it back, just so we can get there," you know. <laughs> Somebody that you know is mean, blunt, kind of maybe. I say mean because I'm mm-hmm. sensitive. Mm-hmm. Somebody kind of blunt, kind of straightforward at the house. Okay, so Kira's um, talking about, you know, we can mm-hmm. have a, a partner amongst ourselves or a group. Back to the but then you can, um, you know, there can be somebody at home. Mm-hmm. So give me some more feedback in terms of um, calendar. Accountability. What do you see working for you, Tia? Uh, well, my calendar. Yeah, I would have to find time because I do work full time, but I just have the flexibility of being able to work from home full time. Mm-hmm. But then I'm also trying to do a home business from home, so I'm trying. I got <laughs> like a lot of things going right now that I'm right. have to really. I'm just sitting here thinking, okay, I need to really get like a schedule or just. I like paper. I like mm-hmm. to look at things. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to have to really set aside what I want to do and when so that I can make all <coughs> things happen because I'm not stopping any of it. I just need to figure out what mm-hmm. buckets I'm going to put it in to make it all flow. Together. I like your determination. <laughs> so seriously, like if you were I'm thinking when Aaron uh, was going to school and working, um, I mean, she had to have effectively a calendar, you know, mm-hmm. to right. So, whether you are have no other job or have three, um, if you want it, you need to figure it out, schedule it. Um, so, and you're going to do it, right? Mm-hmm. 
I believe in you. I mean, right today, well, this week, because I work from home. Mm -hmm. So just the fact that I had to be out and traffic and up and about, that was, I mean, I've been at home for years. Mm. So Let's yesterday I was actually <laughs> packing lunches, ironing my clothes, and this is for me, not for my daughter, because she's in high school, she can do her own thing. <laughs> but I set my alarm because I go to the gym. Mm -hmm. I set my alarm for 4 o'clock. I was at the gym at 5. I was back home by 6. I was dressed by 7. I took her to school by 7.30, and I sat in traffic for about an hour. <laughs> so, <laughs> and you said, "Lord, yeah." So <laughs> but she was here well before class. Yeah, because yeah. I figured, well, I don't know how traffic is going. I'd rather sit here, and then I can see what I'm doing, what I need to do for my full time job while I'm sitting here waiting on everybody mm -hmm. to come in, and that way, I'm attending to everyone and just getting everything that I need to do done. I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> I like well, I mean, I think, I think a lot of this has to do with your skill sets and communication. You have to be transparent and sincere. So if you have some conflicts and such and you're like, look, I, I really you know, want to be able to make sure that we're helping you and taking care of you. Um, I do have conflicts in my schedule with yours and stuff on this day, this day, this day. You know, what do you say? And you're flipping your calendar while you're talking, you know. Um, mm -hmm. My buyer <laughs> clients and stuff, um, I had to get up at 6 a.m. on Saturday morning. I was able to show them seven properties, and I had to cut it off uh, at those seven at 115 to get back to my house to get my son to baseball practice. But it was because I talked to them and communicated with them, and we got a whole lot of accomplished and stuff in that time frame. And so my point is, is like, you know, it, yeah. it's okay to say out loud what is, what's yeah. going on. If people want to work with you, they're going to be okay with it. They will. They got stuff in their lives. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they got stuff in their lives, and, and they would probably understand, and, or they're kindred spirits in some right. way. So like, communication is mm -hmm. inherently in, in imperative. Understand your honesty rather than you trying to rush through. That's exactly right. right. Or right. going in my head, or just no response, or you're late. I hate late. That's right. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, AC, you had your hand up earlier. Yeah, I just, I'm kind of trying to think about how, and I know that probably go way more in this, but how do leads work like if someone wants to call the main office? Because obviously the people that are answering the phones aren't agents, correct? Right. The, um, well, it, are you saying when they, if they call and ask for you? No, like if someone calls like, hey, I'm looking for a house in this area, we saw your signs out, but I don't have an agent. How do we, um, it, we don't get a lot of those. Um, and the reason is because everybody shops online first and their agents, you know, listed. We, we get calls um, inquiring about the property. Okay. Um, and so what we do, if, they're, if it's property specific, then we connect them with the listing agent and they take it from there. Um, I guess I'm saying, because I'm assuming in today's world, like the idea of like cold calling is not so big and people aren't calling like a main line to get an agent anymore. So how are those leads picked up? Well, so like how are you picking up just a random, or um, like all having now going off of what we do with our database? Is there no, no. Um, some people will go on kw.com there, you know, to look for an agent. Um, if you, I, n I remember when I was brand new, there would be some random hits on a KW website and Brad would feed them to me because we were friends. So there are a few, but they're just not um, substantial. Right, right. A lot of people that I talk to are like, oh my gosh, you don't have desk time. That's how I got all my first clients. Mm -hmm. so it's and I'm just wondering how you're picking, because those, those people are still out there, but how are you getting them into your funnel? Uh, more people are, um, <coughs> they inquire electronically rather than right. over the phone. So people are getting them on either on their website. Okay. So it's, it's just more of a digital experience okay. than a phone. I had like a very good experience with Facebook. Um, I mean, I just set up like a trial to kids. The third class right. is all about finding your business okay. and mm -hmm. social media and all that stuff. So can we hold that? And yeah. I want you to share. Yes, I want everybody to share whatever they've tried already. Okay? 
Um, so there are just two. We're wrapping up. Um, turn, pull out page. The last one that I gave you. Is. Our last page is sixty-seven. Mm -hmm. That's recall and remember. Yes. Give you a hint. In each of the twelve lessons, the re recall and remember. It's highly likely that that's where test questions come from. Uh -huh. Just saying. So, and uh, but not all of them. Not all of them. Um, for instance, the si six personal perspectives. You're never going to hear this again. But I'll just tell you what they are. Okay. Um, commit to self mastery. Um, meaning you got to have a conversation with yourself about are you really committed to being a business owner and doing this thing. And you do this in private so no one thinks you're crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Number two is commit to the 80-20 principle. It's kind of, it's y'all know 80-20, 20% 20 of your effort yields 80% of your results. Mm -hmm. And that's where um, only putting the 20% on your calendar is the must-dos. You know, it's similar, and you don't have to put down every little thing you're going to do all day. Um, I mean, that's just another iteration. Um, but that you are committed to your 20%. And you'll hear this in Color World, your 20%. What is your 20%? The answer is always... Lead generation. Lead generation. <laughs> always. Okay, moving from E to P, we talked about that. That's number three. Uh, from entrepreneurial to purposeful. You are driving your own um, train. Okay, uh, number four is make being learning based the foundation of your action plan. So a lot of words for never stop learning. Um, make being learning based. Never stop learning. Yeah, learning based the foundation of your action plan. So it's quite wordy. Um, Number five is remove your limiting beliefs. Yeah. An example would be, um, I can't memorize scripts, I've never been good at memorization, or all scripts sound canned. You know, the kind of things you tell yourself never, and always, that you know, that you talk yourself out of things. So, just you have a little chat with yourself about about those because they will hold you back. And then number six is be accountable um, not only to yourself and your family but you know have somebody else. Eventually I highly recommend coaching um, a business coach and there are different forms and ways of doing it. Use Terry. She is free for now. Eventually you will have to pay for coaching if you you know, use different sources, but I tell you, when you got somebody that is going to tell you like it is, if you don't meet, do, if you don't do what you say you're going to do. Oh, I like her. It's mm. that's the friend you. So have. yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay, now what's the daily ten four? Page thirty two. What's the? Um, <laughs> give me one. No, on every line, page thirty two. <laughs> <laughs> Ten calls, ten notes, ten contacts, preview Yeah. Okay, we haven't gone over this yet, but um, Gary has a book, The One Thing, and mm -hmm. the question is, what the? And you can fill this in. One thing I can do, such that by doing it. Everything else will be easier or unnecessary. Easier or unnecessary. Huh? Right, and so the it's a focusing question. Um, if you, you know, sometimes you're just stuck and you don't know what to do next. If you ask yourself this question, it helps not waste time. What's the one thing I can do such that by doing it? Everything will be easier or unnecessary. There is not one thing all the time. 
it, it can change depending on the circumstance of what you're trying to initially just like your um, what's the thing your 20% um, your initial one thing is lead generation. But obviously it's not lead generation 24-7. But in Keller world, your 20%, your one thing, lead generation. You just can't do real estate until you have a client that's agreed to work with you. I'm curious. Um, okay. How many leads will you have in your database by the end of Ignite? Do they want you to have? 200. See, you answer every question. Let somebody else be quiet. No, just because you're paying attention. I want to make sure other people are paying attention. I'm convinced of you. Um, why are scripts important to you? The answer they give because they are known as words that work. And why would you not want to use them? Anyway. The um, other thing I want to address is this thing called mission. Okay, that it's in the in the book. There's a, there's a packet, and you, you, it's like homework prior to each class. So this was mission number one, and dated material. A bunch of these things, like Diane Black did for you when you signed up, so you don't have to do all this stuff. Um, there is, and then on for mission two for Wednesday's class, you know, it seems like activate your eH account. You've already done all, I mean, it's already been done for you. Tell the world who you are with your KW presence. Um, no, I don't. Oh, we gotta get ready. I would say, I would say on these missions, the, the only thing of benefit that I have found is when they say, go watch this video. That's you know, that's a uh, helpful thing. But, um... Where is this piece of paper you're reading on? Well, if you open your... The book, the book sitting there. Mm -hmm. And then the flap... Okay. Yeah. So it's a bundle, it's a homework. Yeah. Is this something we take with us or just stays with the book? Well, it stays with the book. Okay. So now, let me just recap what I want you to do for homework. I do want you to fill out, figure out what your big why is. Um, I'd like you to, um, if you haven't done the dollars, you know, how many, try at least have an appointment set with Terry Cummings um, to figure out, you know, how many transactions, that sort of stuff. And if you've already done it, then you've already done it. Um, I want you to be prepared to talk about, uh, uh, say, how are you going to track your activities and what sort of calendaring system for you to make sure you get your 20% done. And it'll be, it's individual, but I'm going to stand up here and ask you. Go. <laughs> so you're calendaring your 20% and um, tracking your activities, and it can be a tick system or whatever, but you need to know for your own purposes did I do anything on QC? You know, or I made ten calls. You know, or I talked to ten people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you can't plan until you know what you've done. It's that I like what you had, uh, Ira, about the past, present, and future. You you have to keep records on your own productivity. You know, in the corporate world, somebody's keeping records, and and if you have people under you, they're keeping records. So now we have to do it for ourselves. So Tim. Yes, ma'am. Tell me our homework for why. Mm -hmm. Um. Right now, uh, big why. Um. How are you going to track your your activities? And then the third one, I don't have. Um. How? What sort of calendaring system are you no. going to do to make sure you <coughs> get your twenty percent done? Well, the, I don't know what the uh, your goals well, well. in terms of. Dollars. Oh yeah, your your. Money goals that, but haven't you already met with Terry? Yeah. No. I yeah. have, I have. I have. Okay. But has she gone through the economic yeah. model? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I think that's like her second. Is she doing right? Don't know. 
Um, she's right through that wall. I'll I'll show you where she or somebody can show her um, where Terry sits. I I need to attend with you. Just at least that point. Okay. Um, so we can't write in these books. No, no, no. So now we're going to say, do you want to buy the books? No, no. Wait. It's on mine. It's on mine. Okay. I will tell you this. If you decide. If you don't want, want your book, would you bring it up to me? If you don't, if you decide to print it out with an inkjet printer, it will cost you a hundred dollars. <laughs> do you want this book? Or more. Oh, I'm sorry. And this if you so print it at office. And all these office things. Office. 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 Office Depot has a thing <coughs> at Keller Williams okay. where you can actually upload this thing to their thing and print it out for you. But I'll have any idea where it's from. Thank you. Go ahead and pay. No, we she has not charged you or anything for it yet. She's waiting for me to tell her. Oh, the wedding night, bucks with the book. Right. Okay. Yeah. And that, that's how I. That's but you want it. Yeah, I'm here more for it. You know, I, I'm going to say, okay. Charge these. We have five of these. We have thirty-five. I'm returning to the office. Gotta be a problem. I'm old school. You know that. That's why I want to. All right. Are you keeping a book? Probably not. Oh, and y'all were sharing. I'm keeping. Okay. Woo! One keeper here. I'm a. I'm a keeper. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Are y'all keeping a book? Can I let you know on Monday? Uh huh. I'm gonna take with me, but I'll let you know. Yeah. As long as you don't. Oh well, I'll do that too. That way I'll see what I got. Because I've got part of this. Perfect. I just can't be doing no research. What do you think? Yeah, well, and it looks like, oh, okay. <laughs> 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 no, okay. Uh, so, what everybody likes is this, the uh, toolkit. Yeah, yeah, okay. I will bring all those on. You don't need them before mm -hmm. Wednesday. Um, okay, kids. So, so Stacy, just just a thought, right? Cause right, wait. Right, before I forget okay. this, sorry. Leave the name tense. No. Can I get one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, you can. Okay. So Bob. just a thought. So, like when you, when we do the new agent orientation, right. I mean, and I asked it if it was like on a thumb drive, right? You know, memory stick. Yes. Like, could they put this on like a memory stick? I know it's out there, mm -hmm. right? But Going out and searching all the different areas, you know, it would just be easier if it was on that new uh, agent orientation. Like, uh, oh, like okay, or the same phone. So, thumb drive, so you get, you get the, here's all the Keller Williams stuff, and then, then there's another file or, you know, that has, I like that. Like, your Ignite binder, right? Mm -hmm. And it's there. And so, cool. then, then you have, then you can just download it to your, your laptop or Right, I thought you were talking about no, no. yet another thumb drive, but no. you're just saying put it on that one. Yes. yes. I like yes. it. I like it. Okay, well now, before you leave, sadly, every class, you have to fill out one of these evaluations. So the teacher's changing. This is a direct requirement. So I will always ditto put the... the class, you can't just go get up? No. Okay. I have to scan these, you know send I'm them in to out front education. Well, you know I'm trouble. I know you are. So I will always put the name of the teacher in case you forget. But um, I suppose the five is good and one is bad. Kind of bad well, read the sentence. Can we leverage the structure was knowledgeable about the topic? Good evaluation. Oh, the top part. Yeah, in the box. Okay. Maya. And then. Thank you. Paying anything for good, good reviews? <laughs> 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 Thank you, Tim. And Tim, name Tim. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> <
So, no, so where, where do you work now? Have you have just here to call for you? Hey, I would like to see for Columbia Resolution. Okay. Or save some money. Um, I don't want to do the 35. You want to go to the Okay, well, now you need another one. Myra? Yeah. Hey! Y'all, this is Scott Party. He is oh, a God. wonder man. <laughs> what and, oh, let me come and stop my live stream. Don't stop streaming. Go on. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> you do great yeah, speaking. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even talk. Yeah. 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 Yeah.